Hi, I'm Tony. I am a professional video game comic book quilter. I do this for a living. What did you do after I la after I was? Uh... But you can't go in on top of that box because you're gonna fall over. Oh, he wanted to go in the box. You're gonna fall. No, no, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> he fell over. <laughs> The defend is strong with this chat. Seriously, cat. Okay, Grana has got this weird thing where he goes. And then throws up everywhere. Whoops! Oops! I scared the <laughs> I scared the cat! What do you think you're doing? Oh, stupid mother! Yes, it's in a Y, and then you want to sew down. Ow! Ow! Ah! Oh my god, oh my funny bone, it's not funny, it hurts. Computer, add a cat to my cart. It looks like Amazon doesn't sell cats. <laughs> Dance. <laughs> imagine seeing that on your television. I know, right? <laughs> Just imagine. You, know, you, you think I would be used to this by now? Updating stream title, doing all the things, you know, doing doing all the things. You, you, Thank you for subscribing you to Quilltony. Hey, Grab your needles and head down to the sweatshop. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. Thank you, Mikey. What was it? How many months? 19 months of doom less than three. Thank you so much for that resub. I appreciate you, Monkey. Yeah, you'd think that I would be used to, hey, let's do the things that I need to do. So, let's start off with some housekeeping things. Number one, um, I'm going to miss a lot of chat today. So, if you really, really, really need me to read something, if you have a question for me, please at me. It's going to highlight it so that I can see it. Um, other than that, just let's have some fun. Uh, for anyone new to my stream, hi, I'm Tony. So I am a professional video game comic book quilter and we are doing block one bubble sore of the retro gaming quilt along. I'm so excited. So I am here uh, in Maryland right now. I'm in actually Crofton, Maryland at Tomorrow's Treasures. Tomorrow's Treasures is the reason why I quilt, is the reason why I sew. Uh, when I had an interest in quilting and sewing, they're the ones I came to and I said, hey, so I'm thinking of doing this thing, I need a machine. They were patient, they were caring, um, they, they held my hand, they showed me things, they were fantastic. And I always tell people, if you need to find a local quilt store that is an amazing quilt store, let me know, because I know what to look for. And I will research. And I am sure if you are joining me live right now from one of our participating quilt stores, it is an amazing, awesome, fantastic store. And everyone needs to, to, to give them some patronage. Um, information is online at the Retro Game and Quilt Along site on my website, quiltoni.com, uh, if you want to take a look at some of the stores that are participating. Uh, if you are in the Maryland area, uh, I spoke to Vicki, who owns the store here, and she said that classes here are free. Uh, there were a few people that signed up for today, but I'm by myself. And they didn't show up, so we'll see if they come late. I've got the door open. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's have some fun. Let's do some stuff. 
Um, yeah, let's do some things. So if you're here, I will also be here next week. So if you're in the Maryland area, if you want to join me next week, you can sign up at Tomorrow's Treasures. It's a free class as long as you purchase your fabric from them. Uh, and then when I'm not here, they said they're going to keep on doing the classes. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so let's see. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Minya Mama, Miss Elvin, Geeky Quilter, Infestry. Did I get everyone? Lego, Nikki. Yeah, yeah, pro streamer. Pro streamer, everyone. Pro streamer. Okay, so face things. If you are joining me from, a, from your home, from a studio, from anywhere, if this is your first time using Twitch, uh, we, I am going to go a little fast because we have four hours to get this block done. Uh, you can pause the video. You can pause it, you can fast forward it, you can rewind it. It's just like a regular program on your television. But remember, if you've rewound or paused it, you're not interacting with me live. So you can't type in chat and actually get a direct you know, response from me. Um, so keep that in mind if you're doing that. This video is going to be on YouTube tomorrow. So first thing, I'm, as soon as I'm finished today, I'm gonna get it downloaded. In the morning, I'm gonna upload it to YouTube and then I'll put it out there. So if you get lost, have no fear, sit back, have some fun, and you can always watch the video tomorrow. And it's gonna be on there forever. Forever! So you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so, marble coat, yes, yes. Hey, Umbridge! Yes, oh, oh, still in marbles? Thank you. Thank you. And changing the category would help, right? Man, cat yep, yep, I did do that. Man, all right, hold on. Thank you, edit it. I edited the title. I, I am a pro streamer, pro streamer. All right, makers and crafting done. Thank you very much for letting me know that, guys. Okay, I should be in makers and crafting now. It's gonna take a minute to register, but I should be in makers and crafting. Congratulations, you have Fantastic. just followed Quilto Deep. Your taste and must be exquisite. Uh, ben Rook, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, mod on duty today. You have Nikki and you have Geeky Quilter. Uh, Umbridge, now is not the day to do that, please. Please wait until another day because we are doing a quilt along today. So uh, wait at least a few weeks until we're not doing a quilt along. So no Mondays for doing that. I know what you wanted. Um, yes, you did help. Goodbye. I know, I know. Uh, Tiger starts every single Monday from one to four. Every single Monday. All right, let's make sure. Let's refresh this and see if I am now in Makers and Crafting. It still says marbles. Well, shoot. In the category, it still says marbles even though I'm supposed to be Makers and Crafting. That's okay, I'll make sure. Yes, no, it's, again, I'm not doing a special stream. So this is, again, on YouTube. This is a special block quilt for YouTube. Um, you see Makers, fantastic. Thanks, Ms. Sylvain. All right, now that we got that underway, you guys ready to get going? You you want to you want to see something cool that I did? You want to see something cool? Ready? Look look what I downloaded. <gasps> I have I have an app. Look, I has I have an app that I can change my scenes. I can do it all from my phone. No running across the th yeah. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I know, right? Stream decks on my phone. Stream decks on my phone! You like that? So then that way I can just keep that here and I can click on the things and then when I go back and forth, I can just do that. Isn't that fun? I, hey, hey, it's an amazing thing. Thank you very much. Okay, all right, everyone's got the blocks, right? So make sure you should have your three pages. If you do not have your pattern, it is now available, exclamation quilt along in order to get your pattern. Uh, we're going to go through it step by step for all of the things. We're going to take a 10 minute break about, um, oh, I said two o'clock mods, didn't I? Three o'clock. At three o'clock, we're going to take a 10 minute break and, and let's get going. So your fabrics, we are using Stonehenge Toscana fabrics. Uh, all of the participating quilt stores do have these fabrics. They're offering it for sale. They're luscious, gorgeous, amazing fabrics. They are awesome. Um, oh. Wait till she loses her phone. Yeah, I'm not gonna lose my phone. I got it. I got my phone over there. I got it. So first step, let me move this over here, is we're going to cut our fabrics. Thank you so much for following my YouTube. I appreciate it. So we're gonna cut the fabrics. That's what that sub means. It means someone just followed the YouTubes. 
Um, all right, you know what? While I'm cutting, I'm gonna put comments right there. We've got, hey, I don't squirrel. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, another thing. I'm gonna be talking about some of the tools that I use. Uh, these tools allow me to go fast and they allow me to speed up. So I may go a lot faster than what you guys are. I may move at a different pace. Uh, and that's because of these tools. Check your local clothes store. They do, I'm sure they carry them or they carry something equivalent. If they don't carry them, I'm sure they can order them. They're fantastic. So if I go a little bit faster than you, it's okay. Like I said, this is gonna be on YouTube. You can pause it, don't worry about it, okay? For my regulars, we are still doing giveaways. We are not gonna be doing giveaways today though. What we're gonna be doing is keeping track of all the giveaways, including raids, and we're gonna be doing them next Tuesday. Umbridge, that's a great time to talk to Ahmad about what you need to talk to. Next Tuesday, we are going to be doing that. Um, all the giveaways, and you're gonna be able to see the things I have gotten in the mail. It is fantastic. All right, I've got my fabric. Let's do some cutting. Let's do some cutting. Now, this ruler that you see right here is not the ruler that is in that link. Um, this is actually a new one. It is also by Stripology, but it is the Stripology squared ruler. So I'm actually using this as a square up as well. Uh, you will need a square up at the end in order to square your stuff up. So let's go ahead and cut some strips. So I'm at the very top, I see white. Whenever you're rotary cutting, you always want to cut the very end off in order to line it up. Now, I need one two and a half and two one and a half. So I need one two and a half strip and then two one and a half. So there's one and a half and one and a half. All right, we've got our first cuts. Now, I always try you know what, I don't have a scrap bin. I'm gonna put my trash over there. What I like to do is cut all my fabrics first and then read the rest of the instructions because it says cut the following fabrics, right? All right, so let's take a look at black. Let's do black and I'm gonna have to iron this. If you want more information about this iron, it is the Aliso Pro. You can get it at your local quilt store. If you decide to get it online, I do have a discount code, exclamation iron, if you would like it. All right, let's line this up. Now, one of the reasons why I like to use this a lot better is it's a little bit shorter, it's more compact, but it's also longer. The regular stripology is about, it's super, super wide, it's really big, but it is one of those things that is, um, it's harder. It's harder to do a smaller space it's nice for whenever I'm whipping through things. All right, so we've got black. We're doing three two and a halves. One, two, three. You see how fast these strips go with this? That's why I love it so much. And two one and a half. So there's one and a half. And I'm actually going a little bit slower than what I normally do to try to let you guys catch up and keep up, right? All right, so there is our scrap, and here are our blacks. Let's put that there, and there's black. All right, next is coral. I love this fabric. This coral fabric is absolutely gorgeous. And let's iron it. Now, I've already ironed my fabric. So, and feel free to ask questions, guys. Like I said, I may or may not catch all of chat, depends how fast it goes. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask. I predict chat's not gonna be very busy because I think most of you are making this block. Now, if anyone decides to join after we've gotten started, that's perfectly fine. They can always go back and rewatch some of the stuff. All right, we've got one two and a half and two one and a half. Okay, coral is done. Now let's do apple green. So Nicole is the one that named the colors. 
Thank you for subscribing to Quill Tony. Grab your needles and head down to the sweatshop. Hey, Fritz! Thank you so much. Factory. Oh, I forgot to mention because I was gonna message Fritz since he's the one that got it for me, and I forgot. Guess what? I can't find. I can't find my portable microphone. So I am using my uh, my blue snowball instead. Uh, so I've got it completely on the other side of the room. I'm not gonna touch it, it's not moving. So if for some reason the mic doesn't work, just let me know. Just let me know and I've got it. All right, let's go back to cutting. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Fritz. Thank you, what is that, nine months? Nine months, we got a Twitch baby. We have a Twitch baby, Fritz. And for anyone that is new to my stream, I normally have music going on in the background, but I felt, you know what, today we don't want any music. Two and a half, sorry, one two and a half and two one and a half. Perfect. Because we don't want to take the chance of A, you not hearing me, or B, something. All right, so we've got that. Perfect, I think we've got all of our fabric cut out. Wonderful, all right, so we have all of our fabric cut out. I have my white, my black, my coral, and my green. So everything's cut out. Now, from the one and a half inch strips, that's these small ones, cut all in half except for one black and one coral, okay? So let's go ahead and cut these in half. So what I'm gonna do, and this is how I cut it in half. All I'm gonna do is take it and cut it in half right there. So I just cut it right here and that's in half. And then I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna take this, cut it in half and set it aside. It's funny, every now and then I get somebody that messages me that says, well, which way do I cut it in half? And if you think about it, if it, I wanted you to cut it this way, I would have had you cut it a different size. So you're actually just cutting it right here. So you have two strips. They're about 20 to 22 inches a piece. Now, they don't have to be exact, which is why I just cut it right here at the fold. As long as they're in half, that's, that's the, not, that is not what matters. Now, let's say if you are using a fat quarter, I forgot, to, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. If you are using a fat quarter, whenever you're cutting these strips, cut twice as many strips. So in the case of the white, we're supposed to cut one two and a half inch strip, you cut two. If you cut two one and a half inch strips, you cut four. And you do not do this step of cutting the strips in half because they're already cut in half because you've used a fat quarter. So that's only if you're using a fat quarter for your fabric, all right? So it's not a, a regular, it's not your regular fabric. So I'm doing end to end, but like I said, you can do a fat quarter, which is perfectly fine. All right, let's go back to cutting. So I still have one more white I need to cut in half. Now remember, I am at Tomorrow's Treasures here in Crofton, Maryland. Uh, it is a, uh, they are offering the classes for free. So I will be here again next Monday. So if you are here in the area and you wanna come take this class with me next Monday from one to five, just call or stop by Tomorrow's Treasures and sign up. All right, so we've done this step. So now we're gonna go on to the, from the two, with the two and a half inch strips, that's these. So with the two and a half inch strips from the white fabric, Okay, cut two, two and a half by four and a half. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to iron it this way. Now, I cheat whenever I cut my fabrics because I cut them in groups of two. So, I'm gonna take my cutter, I'm gonna lay it across right here. All right, so from the white fabric, I need two, two and a half by four and a half. So let's trim it, we always trim it. Okay, there's a four and a half and I need one two and a half. But you know what? I'm still gonna cut it and set that other two and a half aside. Because chances are, I'm probably gonna use it later on. So, one for in a different, in a different block. Two and a half. 
There it is, and that's all the whites. So I'm gonna set this aside, and I'm gonna set my extra white piece aside. Okay, that one is trash, and now the, I find the white Toscana, I actually have to flip it because it's hard to see which is the right and which is the wrong side. So as soon as I cut the white, I like to flip it just to make sure I've got it. All right, let's set that aside. Oh, Geeky Quilter, thank you so much for looking that up. So if you do want to come and visit me here at uh, Tomorrow's Treasures, Geeky Quilter, just put the link in chat. If you're joining me on YouTube, it is tomorrowstreasures.info backslash home is their website. There we are. Now, please don't let their website influence your opinion. They're not very techy here, which surprised me that they're letting me do this and that they're gonna have these classes because there's not any techy people here on the staff. It's, it's great that they're opening up and learning this. <gasps> do we have an early raid? Do we have someone that raided came in on a raid early? Thank you subscribing to Quiltoni. Grab your needles and head down to the switch. And sweatshop. Boo Block! I, I mean Blue Black, Boo Block Knight, thank you very much for that. Lisa. You're amazing, take my sub. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. How many months is that? Seven months. Thank you, Food Black. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right, so we're doing black. So I've got my white cut. I still have my strips. We're going to the black. So from the black fabric. And let's go to the close-up. All right, black fabric. I need nine four and a half inches. Remember what I said? I like to cut it in pairs. So four and a half nine one two three so there's two four six eight oh and it looks like i don't have enough for another one so now i'm going to start oh, cutting another one hey from november and one two and a half Thank you so much for that raid, Girl November. I appreciate you. Guys, if you don't follow Girl November, please give her a follow. She's amazing. Girl November is an amazing, awesome, fantastic knitter. Um, she's been doing some miniature clothing lately. She also does hats and scarves for charity. She's an amazing, awesome person. Please go give her a follow. We love her here. Um, for those of you that just came on the raid, hi, I'm Tony. We are in the middle of a quilt along, exclamation quilt along for the information. I am doing a step-by-step -step quilt along for block number one, Bulbasaur. So go ahead and take a look at that if you want to join in and please feel free to ask questions. We are a, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to update my, cat, my tags too. I'm just, I am all over the place, aren't I? But yes, so let's go back, let's go back to this. Oh, and giveaways. Uh, the giveaway for that raid just now is gonna be next Tuesday, the 25th, uh, from six to 9 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to be in on that giveaway, we're doing giveaways next Tuesday. All right, close up, back to what we're doing. So we were cutting strips. So we have two, four, six, eight of the four and a half and one, two of the two and a half. All right, that's iron and do another one. How are you, Sarah Dawn Designs? So like I said, if you guys have any questions on sewing, on quilting, on the block, on what we're doing, please feel free to ask. We do have people around the world that are joining us right now making this block together. If I go too fast, remember I am uploading this go too fast, or if you want to re-watch re any parts. If you get lost at any point, I can slow down a little bit, but you can also look at my YouTube. So YouTube is going to be up tomorrow if you want to re-watch any of this. Girl November, thank you so much for those bits. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I need one more set of two for the four and a half. Now, this is a way, like I said, that I cheat a little bit and I cut faster. And like I said, we may not use that extra one. Oh, let's take, in fact, let's set the single one aside. We may not use that extra one on this quilt, but we probably are gonna use it for future quilts, for future blocks, I mean. All right, now we have 11 two and a halfs. I already have two there. So we need to cut 10 more. So two and a half. 
There's two, four, six, eight, ten, and I already have that one there, so we're going to take one away because I need 11, not 10. There we are. Now we have 11 blocks. Oops, battery running low. Uh-oh. What do you mean my battery is running low? There we are. Oops. Come on. My battery is finicky on this. It has to lay a certain way, and if it doesn't lay a certain way, it's not charging. That, that would not... That would not have been good. <laughs> if, my, if my computer all of a sudden shut off. <laughs> all right, let's finish this. All right, now for the one and a half inch, we need 16. So let's go ahead and finish off cutting this one. There's two, four, oops, and that is it. There's a little bit there I'm not gonna use. So there's four, and let's iron this. Now, some people... Hi, Horrid Jack, how are you? I am, um, I'm actually not cosplay quilting today. Uh, that was last week. Today, I am doing a quilt along. I am doing block number one of the quilt along. I actually, I forgot to change my go live notification. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yes, no, I, uh, if I have time at the end, I do have actually one of my, um, I do have one of my cosplay quilts with me. I can show you if you like, but we're actually doing a quilt along with people around the world right now. There's people in classes right now that are making this block along with us. I know, I'm pr I can't believe I forgot that, right? I can't believe I forgot to change my stuff. Pro Strimmer. All right, that was one, two, three, four, so that's eight. I need a total of 16. Eight, and I already cut 10, 12, there we go. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, there we go. Oh, you came. Oh, oh, you came on the on the raid. Sure, monkey. Sure, you were. Yeah, you weren't already here. You you can't uh, you can't see my grin that I have and my winky face. I know, I know. We need to bring in the next Tony. Apparently, I need to reboot. Okay, so we have our white, and we have our black. So I'm gonna set that over here. Next, our coral. Let's cut our coral pieces. There we are. Hey, Gasu, how are you? And let's cut this coral. We need one two and a half and one one and a half. Well, I'm cheating. I'm just going to cut two. There's two and a half and one and a half. And I only need one. So I'm going to take these, set them aside with the rest of my leftover fabrics. And let's set that aside. Fantastic. Next, green. And this is our last one that we are cutting for our solids. Have I gone too fast? Is there anyone that's majorly behind anywhere that I need to slow up a little bit? Or are we okay? All right, for green, I need to cut two four and a halves and three, two and a half. So I'm actually gonna cut four. So one, two and a half, two and a half. And I know if I'm going really fast, it's because of this cutter. And four, one and a half. So one and a half, one and a half. Because it allows me to make my cuts very, very quickly, which if you've been around in my stream, you know I adore that. You know I absolutely adore going fast for that stuff. Okay, so now we have all of our solids. We have our black, our white, our green, and our, um, our apple green and our core. We're done with page one. That's it for page one. That's it. That's it for page one. 
I know. Isn't it an amazing green? Like I said, it is uh, the Stonehenge Toscana line. It is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show you the finished quilt of what we're doing. So I'm going to do that right now and take a small pause to allow people to catch up that are a little bit behind. This is the block right here that we're working on today, the, um, the bubble store. So, there you go. And there's our quilt. If you get the Stonehenge Toscanas, that is exactly how your quilt is going to look. And of course the backing I used was a Stonehenge um, extra wide backing. All right, so let's set that right there, perfect. It is, it's a big quilt, it's a very big quilt. All right, now let's take a look at page number two. Using the one and a half inch strips, remember these right here, these are the one and a half inch strips. Sew the right sides together. If you, this is your first time sewing, whenever you quilt, you most of the time, unless you're appliquing, you want to sew right side to right side. Now, the white, it's very hard to see what the right side is, but if you take a look at the black, so let's take a look at the black. That is the right side. That is the wrong side. So the right side is the side with color on it. So whenever you're sewing, you want to sew right side to right side. Okay? Um, well, no, exclamation cutter, exclamation iron. So if, I said if you want to take a look at the information of the iron menu, Mama, I said exclamation iron. If you want any information on my rotary cutter, it's exclamation cutter. All right, because I don't have time, unfortunately, to go through lots of things today because we do have a time, a time limit. All right, so let's take a look at this. We, wanna, we want to sew one half inch, okay? So I'm gonna take a half inch, so one half inch of a white to black. So you see what I'm doing? This is the right side facing up. So I'm just gonna lay it just like this for sewing. The next one, a half white strip. Okay, this is the right side right here. To half coral. So let me grab my coral and take a half inch of coral and lay that face down. So that way my right sides are to my right sides. All right. Yes, this is my cutter is the, um, it's a rotary cutter. It's by Martelli, which is also where my, my mat is from. My cutting mat is from Martelli. It's an amazing, amazing cutter. Uh, next, half white. So we're gonna grab the other half of the white. So this is the right side to half apple green. So let's get the green. There we are. So face down, right sides to right sides. One black. Okay, so here's my, my full black to my full coral. I'm just going to lay them there just like that because I'm going to actually fold them out. And then a half coral, so right side up. To, oh no, I skipped one. Uh, let, me, let me go back in the order. Half black to half apple green, there we are, and then half coral, to half apple green, there we are, and that's it, so one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. Now, we have an extra half inch strip left. So a half strip left. So we want to take this, set it aside. So I've got my lovely little stack over here of all my extra fabrics. I'm going to take this half one because we're going to use them in future blocks and set that aside. So I've got a nice little stack right here that I can pull out for future blocks. All right, so now what I'm going to do is take this and shift the whole thing right here. Let's move my chat. Now, 38 minutes into the stream, we're actually gonna sew. All right, some of the things that I've got here. 
I've got, of course, my Fantastic for More Scissors. Uh, I have my, uh, which is exclamation for more, F-A-M-O-R-E. Um, I have my cutting gizmo, which I believe is exclamation snip. If you want to see information on this, it's to, um, uh, to separate out my chain piecing. All right, I've got this, and let's do some sewing. So I need my scrap fabric. For those of you that have not chain pieced before, chaining allows you to go faster on a regular basis, save thread, uh, and really lock in those, uh, the, um, the seams before and after and the ends without actually back stitching. All right. Now, of course, I am using a cheap machine on a folding table, so my machine's gonna bounce, it's gonna have some issues. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit slower than normal. All right, so for my strips, you can't see it as closely as you will be able to in two weeks when I'm back home in my studio again. I will have a close-up. If you're watching on YouTube, if you would like to, if this is past week three for the quilt along, if you want to skip on to that video and see a close up, if you're not quite sure how this is going to work, feel free. What I'm doing is using a quarter inch piecing foot with guide. So it has a little piece of metal right here that allows me to sew a perfect quarter inch seam. So what I'm doing is just sewing these two strips together. You notice how I am not using, um, I'm not using pins. All I'm doing is just sewing a straight line and sewing them together. There we go. And just like that. Now, the way that I hold it, and I will show you in the close-up view, the way that I hold it whenever I'm putting it in is it's feeding into the machine. I take my pointer finger, I put it in here between the two pieces of fabric. I take my fingers back here and I lay them here. And all I do is I take my thumb on top, my thumb and my fourth finger, and I move this top fabric back and forth that allows me to have a perfectly lined up fabric without actually stopping the machine. So it's a little bit more efficient. It allows me to, to move a little bit faster. There we are. So any questions on anything I've done so far? Now would be a good time to ask questions and go through stuff since all I'm doing is sewing strips together. only go a certain speed with this. Okay, now I have my two long strips. Now, what I normally do is I take out these long strips and I shake it out. Do you know how often I have sewn a piece, a strip, with it folded up into the strip? Yeah, no. No, no, no. It is not a good thing. So, I line it up and I shake them out. Now, the half strips, it's super easy to not do that to just line those up. Now you notice, I just started sewing. I just kept on going. I'm not, I'm not separating them yet. All I'm doing is throwing everything into the machine and sewing. That's about as fast as I can go, I think. Some of you may pass me, which is perfectly fine. I like how there's no, I can't believe there's no questions. You guys have got this. You got it, it's fantastic. So next week we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna be here at Tomorrow's Treasures. I may have some people in the class, I may not. We'll see. And then the following week I'll be back home in Canada and I will actually be streaming live from my home studio. So I will only be here at Tomorrow's Treasures when I'm on the road. Um, in the month of August, right after between Gen Con and Dragon Con, I'll be driving here and I'll be streaming from here. 
So there will be, I think, three or four classes that are from here. Now, the first week of August, class will actually be on a Tuesday. It will not be Monday, it will be Tuesday. And that is because I'll be driving from Jang on Monday. Now, you Canadians will like it because that's family day. So you won't have to worry about doing the class on family day. But that's the only Tuesday. The week of Labor Day, there's no street. And that's because I'll be at Dragon Con that weekend. And Dragon Con actually runs through Monday. So I won't be driving home, I won't be driving back here until that Tuesday. So there will be no stream at all the week of Labor Day because I didn't want to make it Wednesday that week. I figured let's just take a week off. Now these patterns in videos are simple enough. If you can sew a straight line on a machine, you can do them. So if there's any kids out there, they can do this as well. All right, so now comes the next step. Now we're gonna take all of these strips. So if you take a look at it, it says underneath all of these, cut each of these newly combined strips in half, okay? So we're gonna cut these in half. So what I'm gonna do is take my lovely scissors. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip the thread between them and I'm gonna fold this in half. Now, personally, I like to have the black on top. Now, let me show you how I cut them to maximize the most amount of space. So, right here we have our selvage, right? Right here is just a regular end. So whenever I cut them to cut them in half, I like to line it up a little bit off. So I like to line it up, see how the selvage overlaps? And what this does is it allows me for maximum use of the strips. All right, so let's cut the rest of these in half. I don't know why I like to have the black color on top. I just do. There we are. I think it's more like the darker color. It's just a weird, you know how we get weird quirks sometimes whenever we're doing things? That's just one of my weird quirks. It really does not make a difference which color you have on the outside as long as you're trimming it in half. That's all that matters. You guys are making it super easy on my mods, you know that? And I've got two today, just in case. I was expecting questions. Now, if you are joining me from one of the live classrooms, feel free to log in on your phone. If you have a phone and you wanna log in so that you can watch chat, or if you have questions yourself, you can log in on your phone. You can follow me on Twitch and then talk in there. All right, so we have all of our strips cut in half. So I'm gonna move these over here next to my ironing board. So I have my strips right here. So next up, Take the coral and apple green. Oh, look, I've got that right on top. Take the coral and apple green, and we're gonna nest, the, well, first we have to iron each of the strips open in the opposite directions, okay? What that means, this is my strip, all right? We're gonna, oh, we're gonna iron this towards the coral. These patterns do not have you ironing your seams open. Do not, iron your seams open. I'll repeat again, because it's important. Do not iron your seams open. It is important that you iron them to one side. Now in this case, my seam is pointing towards the coral. So you see how my seam is pointing up towards that coral? That is important because we are going to do what's calling nesting the seams. Nesting the seams allows for perfect points. Now, that one was towards the coral, so this one is going towards the apple green. So we're just gonna iron it just like that to the apple green. There we are. 
Now, now the next step. Take the coral apple green and nest the seams. So nesting the seams means I'm going to take this and line it up. Now you notice how the coral is on top, the apple green's on the bottom. We're just going to line this up and I'm going to take my fingers and make sure that my seams perfectly match up so it nests right on up in there and it takes a while in order to get good at this. If you take a look at it, you'll see, see how those line up there perfectly just like that? There we are. Now, once you have them lined up and you've nested those seams, we're gonna cut and trim the pieces. So in this case, now I've already cheated for you. We're gonna be cutting them in sets. A set is two, two. So we're gonna be cutting them in sets. So for the green and the coral, we wanna cut one set of two and a half. So we wanna trim it up, so cut the end one two and a half and then three sets a total of six of one and a half so one two three now what i'm going to do is take this extra fabric right here and i'm going to set it in my set aside pile so i've got a pile over here that i'm setting my things aside You know, I'm not getting any of my hosts coming through. That's really weird. So I, if, if you've hosted me, I apologize. I just realized that my, uh, my app is not telling me the host like it normally does. But you still get your bonus coins. All right, so, oh, I automatically did something and I forgot to mention what I was doing. I hate it when I do that. <laughs> uh, so. What I did was I took my two and a halves and I split them into two piles. And then I took my one and a half and I split them. These piles are basically the way that the seams are going. So in this case, it's going towards the coral. In this case, it's going towards the green. So that way, it's easy for me whenever I'm lining my things up in order to do it. You guys are talking, I'm just making sure, chat's not, chat is just quiet, right? I haven't uh, lost chat, because the last thing I see is Melissa doing the exclamation cutter. All right, so now I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna stack them together and set them aside. And then, let's do the next one. So, next up is the white black. And I do like to do these in the order. White, black, there it is. That way I make sure I don't miss anything, right? Yeah, let me reset this. I may be missing chat. No, maybe not. You guys are just quiet. Uh, Nikki or Geeky Quilter, can one of you say something in chat just so I know that it's, it's working? And if I don't see anything, I assume that my, uh, my chat is networking and I'll completely reset my iPad. There we are. So I'm gonna go towards the black. And then I wanna go towards the white. So I'm ironing this towards the black and ironing it towards the white. Yep, nope, I don't see chat. Lovely. There we are. Now I'm resetting it. Okay, so we have our black. I apologize if anyone's been asking questions or doing anything. I thought that you guys were just being quiet. There we are, it's reset it. And I've got that, I've got that. Okay, let's try this again. Go ahead and say something else. Let's see if this is working. And that's what happens sometimes in the app, right? Is sometimes the chat just does not work. 
All right, we're gonna line this up. Now, with this, hey, there we are, being something, I can see you. I can see you now. I can see you. I couldn't see you before. Thank you. Okay, so if you ask any questions, so from the time that, um, that I had the, someone put the exclamation cutter, uh, Kiki Quilter or Nikki, can one of you go back and check to see if there were any questions or comments or things like that and pop them in so I can answer them? Because I seriously thought that it was just quiet. You guys are just working. All right, so I forgot to mention, there's lines on here. It's easy to line it up. Whenever you're lining it up, make sure you do it along the seam. So right here, you have it lined up along the seam and then you trim the edge. All right, so black and white. Black and white, we need two sets of two and a half. One, two, and then one set of one and a half. There we go, we've got it. Nothing, okay, fantastic. Um, so Nikki, in the, so if you're nervous or new to quilting, for you mean for the strips? That is a tough question because the problem of using pins if you're cutting, if you're sewing the, um, the actual strips together, it may, um, you may get bunches in it. So if you're sewing your strips together and you actually put pins in there, what will happen is your fabric may bunch up and for the long strips. You can put pins in it. In fact, I did when I first start learning, you know, started quilting. It's not a good idea though. It's, it's better to go slowly and just take the fabric and line it up. So it's whenever you're stripping, which is what that's calling when you're sewing strips together, um, whenever you're stripping, it's a lot better, do not use pins, okay? So hopefully that answers that question. All right, so we're taking this and I'm flipping this up into two separate stacks so that I have all of mine towards the black, all of them towards the white, stacking them on top and setting it aside. Fantastic, thank you, Minnie Mama. All right, next is the white coral, okay? Now, if you are doing this as a standalone block, you may go, Tony, that's a bunch of waste because we're really only sewing one set. Well, if you're doing this as part of the quilt along, in future blocks, you will see more use of this strip. Yes, that's actually a good point, Kiki Quilter. I like that. Or you can use clips. So if you're super concerned about you have to use something, clips is better than pins. Because clips, you can actually adjust and move as you're going. That's actually a really, really good idea. All right. So remember, we want to lay this on top of this one. So both of the corals are on the top. I'm going to move it to make sure that everything is perfectly lined up. They, they would do the same bunching, Zarina, um, unless you're moving as you're going along. So you can also slide the clips as you're going along to prevent the bunching. Basically, if you can avoid putting anything on your strips whenever you're stripping, do it. Do it. Um, oh, uh, Elfrey, this is the cutting board. Uh, the cutting board is, at, no, she doesn't mean the ruler, she means the cutting board. Cutting board is amazing, it's fantastic. It is by Martelli. Uh, I am currently in the process of getting set up as an associate, but right now you can go to martellinotions.com to take a look at it. All right. Once I get all that set up and I can get discount codes for you, I will let you guys know. But this board, yes, no, this cutting board is absolutely amazing. It is thick, it is gorgeous, it is amazing, and it's double-sided, and it may be the last cutting board I ever have in my entire life. That's how good this thing is. All right, so we want to separate these and set these aside. Uh, no, Zarania, it is not. You cannot get this at Walmart. Yes, you can get any, any kind of self-healing mat at Walmart, but those, all right, we're ready for real talk? Self-healing mats you get at a big box store or a Walmart, you're gonna have to replace after a few months. I'm in it, I will probably never have to replace this again. This is probably gonna be my very last cutting mat ever. 
because there is nothing, no grooves in this mat at all. I'm running my nails across it and I feel nothing. So Walmart, things like that, that stuff, those are good for getting started, but Martelli is an amazing, awesome, fantastic. Thank you very much, Geeky Quilter. I super appreciate it. And you'll see why if you ever get one of these in person. They're amazing. All right, white apple green. So let's do the white apple green. The, um, the rotary cutter is also by Martelli, but I do have a, um, a discount code for that one. So that one is the one that he did the exclamation cutter. But I do not have a discount code directly through Martelli yet. I'm working on it. I've just been so busy, I haven't had a chance to message them. But they expressed interest in working together. All right, so we've got that one. All right, so this is the green and white. So we need four sets of the one and a half. All right, we've got one, two, three, four. Uh, I believe if you, I can't think of the command. Um, Geeky Quilter, if you can look at the spreadsheet, there's a command for a basic starting kit that's inexpensive that has a rotary cutter, um, mat, and, um, and ruler. For anyone that's just getting started, there's a good basic kit on Amazon. Hi, Rosalind, how are you today? So there's a good basic kit that you can take a look at, but I don't remember what the actual thing is. All right, and black and coral. Oh, this is our super long strip. All right, because I've got a small ironing mat, I'm just gonna do that and push it off and push it off. There we go. So in chunks, in chunks. There we are. Yes, the ones, and that's the thing, is that I traveled all the way from Canada with this. It did not work at all. The ones you get at big box stores, or and the one that's in that, um, that link that I asked Geeky Quilter to find, those are all inexpensive, and they're very, very thin. And so they're going to warp easily. So if you take it anywhere, chances are it's going to bend and warp. Unless you buy a specialty case for it which um, Yazzie does make a specialty carry case. Exactly, it is, it is exactly get what you pay for. If you can afford a much better, nicer mat that you will never have to replace, you want this one, trust me. Okay, so we've got our black and our coral. We need three sets of the two and a half. All right, we've got one. Now, these rulers, these stripology rulers, you can get at your local quilt store. If your local quilt store does not carry it, oops, I cut too many. I'm just going to set that extra one aside. I only needed three sets, but I may need this in the future. So I'll set it aside. All right, so three sets. One, two, three. I need three sets of one and a half. Oh, starter. Thanks, Nikki. So you can get these stripology rulers from your local quilt store. And like I said, if they don't carry them, they can always order them for you. And they are directly from the distributors, and there's no minimum for them. So they can order you just one. Uh, you can let your local quilt store, if they're in the United States, I know Checker and Brewer both carry it. I do not know about the rest of the world, about which... Um, about which distributors carry them. All I know is that in the States, Checker and Brewer do. All right, so we have all of our pieces. So we have all of our pieces. We're done with our rotary cutter. We're done with our mat. We're finished with that stuff. All right, so I'm gonna take my extra stuff and completely set it aside. Now, here's what I like to do. Let's set this over here. I'm gonna start organizing. So. Hi, Knitaholic, how are you today? So let's organize this 
because the next step, no, step number four, is we're laying everything out. Guys, we've only been doing this an hour and everything's already all cut out. We, have, we still have three hours to go. So you know what, I'm gonna take a quick breather, let people catch up if they're actually sewing with us. All right, questions. Ask me anything on quilting, sewing, it's an AMA on anything we've done so far while I get everything set up and take a drink. Now, whenever I have people in front of me in this class, it's gonna go a little bit slower, but that's okay. Thank you so much, Sarah Dawn. <gasps> oh, Geeky Quilter, very nice. Whenever I get my affiliate code and I get a discount, I'll make sure I let you know so we can update that. Very nicely done, good sir. Look at my mods taking care of you guys. You're fantastic. All right, so any questions? While we're doing that, I'm gonna organize this. So I'm actually going to lay them out by pieces. So this is the easy way for me that I do it, is I like to lay them all out so I can see everything at once. And I can just reach by and grab it. In fact, can you see? You can't see that area over here. Nope, it's cut off. You'll see it whenever I lay it out here. Okay, we'll put the pins there. All right. We've got that. You know what, let me move this down so that I can put these in here. And that's gonna make it easier. There we are. And green. So everyone should be laying their pieces out. There we are. So it's easy for you to grab them. All right, everyone see, seeing what I'm, I've done here? So I've laid all the pieces out so I can easily grab them as I go. Okay? Any questions on that? Everyone good? Yes? I'm not going too fast, am I? I think everyone is, ju is just busily, is working hard, right? Everyone's just really working hard. Okay, all right. Let's go through this then. I'm just going to double check. No, uh, Geeky Quilter at three o'clock. I said at the very beginning I was, I was mistaken, three o'clock, yep. Um, and then I've got that, making sure. A lot of the folks are busy, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of folks are, are busy sewing. Measuring and cutting, okay. We're gonna take a 10 minute break at three o'clock, so hopefully people can catch up. I'm gonna make it 15 minutes just to, and then I'll cut that break out of the YouTube channel. All right, I'm gonna start laying pieces out. Sound good? And no, any, no one has questions in the past stuff? All right, let's lay pieces out, fantastic. All right, so let's do the close up. There we go, no. Yes, okay, making sure I've got it. For some reason it had the different name on it. All right, so let's start laying these out. I'm gonna start at the bottom at row nine and work my way up because I have a certain area here. Oh, hold on. I forgot to cut the black and apple green. Man. All right, let's cut black and apple green. I looked over, I was like, why is there still a piece sitting over here? I am Rosalyn. It is fantastic. It's $25 a year, but I think it is worth every penny. I absolutely love it. Love it. It was super, super easy to install. It was great. I love it. Okay, so I put my, look at that. I put away my cutting mat and my rotary cutter a little bit too early. All right, black and green. I need one set of two and a half. And then four sets of one and a half. So one, two, three, four. Now, if you have not yet downloaded this block, it will be available basically forever. But 
If you have a code from a quilt store, if you are, got your fabric from a quilt store, you're working with a quilt store, they may have given you a code. You can actually download it for free only until Saturday. Saturday is the last day that you can download this block for free. All right, let's set this here and this here. Great, so I've got everything all laid out. Now let's lay the pieces out. <gasps> all right, let's do this. So row number nine. Now this is exactly how I lay them out. So I'm gonna take this. So this is the, um, the very first piece in the bottom left-hand corner. It is in the very bottom of page two, by the way. So very bottom of page two, two. So very first piece goes right there. Now, what I do is I group them in sets of two. Hey, Mama Samu, because when I group them in sets of two, I know that is what I'm going to pin together. So we're laying this one out right here. So I took, you see how I have my, my big piece, my little piece? All I'm doing is I'm grouping it up together just like that. All right, and then next is this one. Now, here's where it's going to get a little tricky. There's a reason why we did seams in opposite directions. So this one, we're gonna do what's called again, nesting the seams. This seam is going towards the green, okay? So it's going this way. The next one needs to go in the opposite direction. So it's gotta be this piece right here, but this one has to go in the opposite direction towards the black. And what that's gonna do when I sew these two pieces together, you see how this nests up? You see how those seams are in opposite directions? So when I pin it, I'm gonna pin this so those perfectly line up and that will allow me to have a perfect seam, a perfect point, a perfect line every single time every single time. Now, every now and then mine don't line up, so it's not every time, but that's okay. All right, so when I say go up or down or left or right, that's what I mean, is which way are those seams pointing? So in this case, the seam is pointing down towards the black, so my next one needs to go up. So it is a large coral in black, so it needs to go up. The next one needs to go down. It's another coral in black, so I took that one, so the seam is pointing down. It's going towards that black. And you see how I'm grouping them in sets of two? So in this case, the next one needs to go up towards the white and then down towards the black and then up towards the coral, down towards the black. And then a black piece. And that is our bottom row. Now, there's two different trains of thought at this point. Uh, there are some people that say, okay, I have my first row laid out. I wanna go ahead and pin this. Some people like to lay out the entire quilt and then go back and pin them. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the, now I normally pin one row at a time, but for today, I'm gonna go and, and lay out the entire thing just to make sure that we've done this correctly, to make sure we have all of the pieces we need. And then we can go back and start pinning. And then I may sit down and pin because, you know, standing for a while kind of hurts a little bit. <laughs> and then I can pin and do that. So, but while I'm laying things out, I like to stand because I like to reach and, and do those things. All right, so let's do row number two. Okay, we have one of these. And I always like to start left to right because it's just a lot easier that way. And there, now, here we, here we go with the seams. This seam goes towards the green, so we need to go towards the green. The next one doesn't make a difference because it doesn't have a seam. It's a solid piece, and there's another solid piece. And then I've got that one. And now, here's our horizontal. So if you notice, if you skip ahead a little bit, and take a look at page number three. It'll say, sew together the three pieces that need to be assembled horizontally. You can do that 
first if you want before you lay this out. You could skip ahead and sew those horizontal pieces, which makes it easier to lay out things, or lay them out and then sew the horizontal pieces. Doesn't make a difference. So in my case, I'm going to lay them out. Now, this is going to go with this piece right here. So I'm going to leave this piece B, but for the horizontal piece, it's a green and a white. Now I have to look at my arrows that are here in my rows. Okay, so I'm looking at my rows. Row eight, the arrow's going this way. That means all the seams need to point that direction. So what I need to do is grab a green and white where it's pointing towards the green because then my seam is going that direction. All right, does that make sense? So, and whenever I am taking anything with seams that are pointing left to right or right to left, I'm gonna make sure that they follow along with my arrows. Okay, so now let's do that white piece there. Let's do this white piece right here. And then our black piece. My black piece doesn't wanna come loose. There we go, and another black piece, all right? That's row number two. Row number three, and I'm just gonna keep on going and lay them out. If you have any questions on any of the rows I have done or anything we've done up to this point, don't be afraid to ask. I can stop and show you. All right, we've got that and that, this piece. One of those. Now remember, if it, is, if it does not have a seam next to it, you don't have to worry about which way the seam is pointing. And then this one, and this one. Hey, whoever just, that, that just means someone downloaded a pattern. Thank you very much. Someone just went and got it. And that one, that should, Yep, there it is on here. Thank you very much for picking up this pattern. I appreciate it. And black and white. And there. And, whoops. And there. Yep, all right, that's row number seven. That's nine, eight, seven. All right, row number six. Thank you very much, Sarasta. I appreciate it. All right, there's, this is row number six I'm laying out right now. So, Zarasta, if you missed the first part of this. Thank you for subscribing to Quill Tony. Grab your needles and head down to the sweatshop. Thank shop. you, Zarasta. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. That's towards the coral. Love your stream. That's towards the coral, so I need to go towards the green. Thank you very much, Zarasta. I super appreciate you. Um, if you, of course, just picked up the pattern, if you're just joining us, this you can, of course, rewind if you want to start from the beginning. You can also watch this on YouTube starting tomorrow. So I will be uploading this to YouTube so you can go back and watch, pause, do whatever you want at any time. All right, so this is row number six. This is towards the green. Oh, the next one has no seam. It doesn't matter. Thanks for supporting Yoni. <laughs> Thank you, Geeky Quilter. I appreciate that. And thank you very much for picking up the pattern. I do appreciate it. We've got that. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, the link to this pattern is down below in the description. Feel free to take a look at it. If you have a code from a participating quilt store, it is only good for the very first week that this is live. After that, it is $3. If you are not working with a local quilt store, well, then it's also $3. Let's see, there and there, and then the black. All right, there's row number six. All right, row number five. Five. We've got that, and one of those. Did anyone have any questions on why I group things the way I do, why I group them? Everyone kind of understands all that, right? And this goes up. So seams going this way. Oh, here we go. Our neck, this is our first vertical piece. So it is the coral and green. 
It needs to go towards the green. Now, I have a small problem. This goes towards the coral. I need this to go towards the green because if I'm looking at it, it's pointing to the right for row number five. Well, have no fear, just re-iron it. So I would iron the wrong side first towards the green and then flip it over and then re-iron this side. You can always, always, always re-iron your seams. And now my seam goes towards the green. All right? And now it's going the right direction. It is not a problem if you have to re-iron that. It is not a problem at all. So if you run out of one seam, have no fear. It's not an issue. All right. And then here. And then here, and then a little lonely little two and a half piece, or four and a half right there. All right, that's five. Let's do row number four. Now, you notice I'm going to run out of cutting mat. That's why you have this extra space here on the camera. So, row number four. And I've got this here and here and then there's that one uh oh did I forget to cut a piece I did I completely missed that little two and a half by one and a half inch rectangle. I forgot to cut a piece. Hello. Okay, where's my... I, uh... And when this happens, it's not a problem. Just pull it out and cut it. Okay, so where is my white? My white is right here. I'm not going to pull out my big old ruler. I'm just going to take my little tiny ruler. And one and a half. Rotary cutters all the way back there. There we go. I got my one and a half. Now, I only need one, right? Go back to page one. I can't believe I forgot to cut that. Yep, I only need one. So I'm going to take this and set it aside to use for future blocks. Perfect. All right. Plate is covered, set aside. Now let's go back to here. Exactly, Minion Mama. And that's the point of this, is that because I, Minion Mama's absolutely right. So she said that it's not a big deal, and because I lay the things out the way I do, it's easy to catch and it's easy to fix, which is why I do it. So um, it, it's my preference, Nikki. It's honestly, it is, it's because I have my cutting mats Le level right here to my edge. It's just my personal preference to go from the bottom up because in my experience I find the hardest part of a pattern is the bottom of it. I don't know why. So I always just like to get the bottoms out of the way and then move up. So good question. All right. So we're going to lay that one right there. Now where was I? There we are. So black and white. And then a green. Oh, let me get that out of the way. Black and white, green. Where was I? Green and white. It's just little quirks. You know, as we do things, as we craft, as we sew, as we do stuff, we actually build little quirks and habits and things. Some of them are good, some of them are not. But it's, I think that's just one of my little quirks, is that I always like to build from the bottom up. And that's if you watch me do any of my larger patterns as well, I do the same thing. I don't know why. All right, this is going towards the coral, so I need to go towards the black. Now, you do not have to do your seams in the directions that I do my seams, as long as, as they're set up correctly, right? Sorry, I'm just looking to make sure I've got everything laid out correctly. Yep, I do, okay. All right, so this is going towards the black. So yeah, as long as they're in opposite directions, that's all that matters. 
So I need to go towards the green. And towards the green with the green and white. And towards the black. Oh, good, I don't have to re-iron that. And then towards the black. Towards the white with white and black. Oh, I don't have to re-iron that one either. Fantastic. And then white and green. Towards the white. Towards the black. Now this one has a lot of pieces, so I'm going to go back through and just double check to make sure it's all correct. Okay, so this is row number three. It's a lot. So there, 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 there. When I have lots of pieces, this is what I normally do because, shocker, I have a habit of flipping pieces. So far in my cosplay quilts, I flipped a piece in every single one. Seriously. I seriously flipped a piece in every single one. Yeah. Okay, number two. Number two. Yes, I know. My favorite part, Serenia, is whenever I'm sewing the rows together. I love, love sewing the rows together because at that point I can actually see the picture taking shape. And there we are. And then there. Oh, it looks like we have another vertical piece. Oh, we got two vertical pieces in this in this row. All right, so we've got that one. Now in this case, it's a green and coral. It has to go towards the coral because row number two is going to the left. So that needs to go towards the left and those two are together. And then I like to flip my bottom up. So the next one, now, and the first one didn't make a difference because it didn't have any seams next to it. So in this case, it's I'm making sure this goes up. So in this case, I'm gonna have the seam go down so the next one that seems gonna go up. So we need to go towards the coral for coral and green. And then coral and white needs to go towards the white. Okay, oh, and then there's the third horizontal piece. That's my way of signing the quilt that I flip the pieces, yeah. And if you're coming to um, Quilt Market Houston, for um, Quilt Market or Quilt Festival in Houston for my exhibit this year, uh, try to find the flipped piece in each one because there is one and then that way all right so that's going down so in this case I need to go this way I just have to remember that whenever I go to pin it all right and then here and then that one okay and then last but not least guys we're on the last row there's one two three a black and coral a singular piece there uh-oh did i lay a piece out wrong or did i cut it wrong i have two of these and i should only i have two of those i should have one i should have um A two and a half. I think I cut it wrong. That's okay. I can set this aside for future patterns. Anyone else that's gone to this point? I, it's, I did it wrong when I laid it out, right? And that's okay because you know what? I cut an extra piece over here. So I can just take these two and set them aside for future ones. Making sure there's not a mistake in there that my testers didn't catch. That it was actually me that I screwed it up when I was cutting. There we go, all right, I've got that. I have all my pieces laid out. So at this point, what I wanna do is do those horizontals because guys, we're done with page two already. We are done with page two. That's it. On to page three. All right, page three. We're sewing the horizontals together. So let's find them. So in this case, remember, there's nothing on either side. So I'm gonna take the bottom up. Now, whenever I flip this bottom up over the top, basically I'm going to be sewing it this way and then ironing it this way. All right, this is the easy, fast way to do it. 
So let's go ahead and pin this. I like to put a pin in the center because that is where my seam is. So I always put a pin where the seam is and then put a pin onto the right and a pin onto the left, okay? So I've got this pin, it is taken care of, it is pinned together, we're gonna set that aside. Now, row number eight, I have two of them. In this case, my seams on either side are going up, so I, this can go down. So I'm gonna take the bottom, flip it over the top, and then pin the seam, and then pin either side. There we go. Now, for this one right here, remember I said this seam is going down. If I were to take the bottom and flip it up, my seam is gonna go down as well. So what I wanna do is take this top and flip it down and turn it, okay? Make sure that you do that the right way. So if you go top down, make sure you turn it so that you are pinning the correct side. If you pin the wrong side, you're going to sew it the wrong way. Keep that in mind. All right, so let's do all the pinning here, just like that. Now, I've got my three. So let's do some sewing. I've got my three together. Now, if you notice, I've got a bunch of, oh, you know what? I think I, let's make sure I didn't, I have an extra piece right here. Let's make sure I didn't uh, use the wrong one. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. I figured it out. I cut four. Okay, let me set that aside. That is fine. Now, these, these, these are perfectly natural to have a single one. If you have more than one, you've done something wrong, okay? If you have more than one of these left over, you've done something wrong. If you have a solid color, you've done something wrong. So keep that in mind. So these all can get separated. This all can get set aside. So I have no pieces left. All right, let's sew. Whew, man. Everyone's working, everyone's busy. Any questions? All right, now, I'm gonna tell you right now. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't sew over your pins. It's a horrible habit that I have. It's not a good thing to do. If you have my habit, you know why. You can break your needle. You can throw the timing off in your machine. Don't sew over your pins. That being said, I sew over my pins. All right, so same thing. We're using our quarter inch piecing guide with our foot. It is a foot that your quilt store can get for you. It is a fantastic foot. If they don't have any in stock, they can order it for you. Now, I have my leader in here. Remember, we are chain piecing. So I've got my scrap fabric. I'm gonna trim it at this point, set it aside. So I'm sewing all three of these. All right, we've got that. And I'm going to take my leader and my scrap fabric and put it in. And then I've got my three. Now, here is, in fact, I'm going to do this close up so you can see. This is, it's exclamation snip. It is the, um, the gypsy quilter cutting gizmo. So all I do is I can separate my pieces just like that. Now, you can make one yourself using a, um, how did people do that? Using a, using a um, seam ripper. You can use a seam ripper and a spool. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of ways to do it, that you can do it. But it's really cool. So you can, it's actually a, a good way of separating them. It's super fast. And I've had that for years and it hasn't dulled yet at all. 
All right, so we've got those. I'm taking my pins out. Now, you notice I was very, very careful. As I sewed and as I put my pins out, I did not flip these pieces at all. So in my hand is the way that it needs to be ironed. Okay, and that's important. So let's lay these out and let's iron it in the direction that I sewed it. There we go. There we are. And that is the way the seam is going. Okay? All right, so in this case, we've got, we make sure I know where my pieces are. The black is up here. Combined with that one. This one is up here, combined with this. And then this one goes down here, there. Now, you notice how I put it in the directions right there? And then that way, it was easy for you to, to go back and figure it out. So you didn't have to go back to the previous page. Okay, I'm gonna move my chair over and we're gonna do some pinning. So, can I have a mod say something in chat? I wanna make sure my chat do not freeze again, please. Oops, cancel business Twitch. Do, 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 do. Yep, nope, my, uh, my chat froze again. Okay, so let's close this and bring this up. Oh, what color, okay, what color thread am I using for my piecing? I am using off-white. I'm using a Guterman off-white thread. There we go, I'm good again. And any other, um, any other questions that I missed? So the last thing that I saw was Jose saying that was the way that I signed my quilts, was that my pieces are upside down. So are there any other questions or anything that I missed while I was doing that, while I was working? Other than what color, what color thread? Honestly, any neutral threads. You can use gray, you can use off-white, um, a pale yellow. I just like to use a, a general off-white because that doesn't show no matter what I'm using. That was the only one? Okay, fantastic. Awesome, 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 okay. You ready to pin some rows together? Let's do this. So, this is my row. This is my first one right here that I'm gonna be doing. How I'm doing this, you take a look at it. Row, the very bottom row, row number nine, my arrow is to the right. Remember, we're on page number three now. We're sewing our rows together. This is the step that takes the longest, all right? It takes the longest. Hey, Steve! So I'm going to the right for my sewing and my ironing. So what I want to do in this first row, this is how I remember it. I'm going to the right, so I'm taking this right piece, flipping it over the left, and then pinning it in place. All right? Now, I am showing you my techniques to go fast. If this is your first pixel quilt, you do not have to do it this way. You can do it any way you like. So right over left and pin it in place. As long as you know that these two, this seam right here is where you are sewing to put these two pieces together. So right over left and then pin it in place. There we are. Now, I've got a nice little stack right here. I'm just gonna stack that right there just to make sure I've got those. Now, for the third piece, same thing. I'm taking this right piece over the left piece and pinning it in place. And this is gonna be my life for about 20 minutes. It's just sitting here pinning. Just like that. So I'm gonna go back out to here and I'm gonna tell you because there's no point in showing you the close up here, right? Right over left 
and pin it in place. And then I'll switch it back to the close-up at the beginning of each row, just so you can see what's going on. Unless if you really want me to do the close-up, if you don't want to see my face. <laughs> so right over left, pinning it in place. Yeah, for anyone that is new to Twitch, if you are watching at a store, if you're watching from home, uh, if you're new for the quilt along, if you're new to Twitch, if you would like a Twitch guide of how Twitch works, how to follow a channel, how to sub, etiquette, things like that, send me a message either on Facebook or at an email, Tony, T-O-N-I, at Quiltoni, Q-U-I-L-T-O-N-I, dot com, and I'll shoot you a guide that we made. Uh, the combination of Miss um, Elvain, one of my mods and myself, put together a really cool Twitch guide for you with pictures, step-by-step -step pictures of how to do those things. So it's really nice. All right, so number eight. This is row number eight. Row number eight, our arrows are going to the left. So if our arrows are going to the left, how do you think I'm going to handle this one? Which piece am I going to pick up and put over on top of the other one? No whammies, if you can sew a straight line, you can do this. I have faith in you. If you can sew a straight line, you can do my patterns, especially because this video is gonna go up on YouTube and you can just go uh, step by step by step. All right, so which piece am I going, if this is going, the arrow is pointing to the left, so I'm going this way. Which piece goes over which one? I'm waiting for chat. Am I going left to right, or am I going right to left? Everyone's too busy sewing, right? So I don't, it doesn't matter if it's a mod or not. Somebody in chat tell me if my arrows are going to my left, which piece am I picking up to go over to the other one? Man. Come on, guys. Oh, you know what? My chat froze again. All right, you know what? We're closing the iPad because the, the app keeps freezing and you guys have been giving me answers. I apologize. Left over right. Yep. Yeah, left over right. Yeah, all right, so left over right. So we're taking this left piece here. Close up, come on. There we go. This left piece here and over the right piece and then I'm pinning the left. So remember, if I'm going left to right, I'm pinning it on the left side as well. All right, so it's not just which piece you're folding it over, it's the side that you're pinning as well. And yes, I agree. And Geeky Quilter was one of my pattern testers. So he can tell you, if you can sew a straight line, you can do these patterns. All right, so the next one, I'm going left over right and then pinning it along the left because this arrow is going to the left. And yes, I'm gonna repeat this over and over and over and over. To hammer it into the brain to make sure you remember. All right, left over right, and pin on the left. And this is row number eight that I'm doing. All right, left over right. Oops, I forgot to put that away. Left over right, and pinning it on the left. There we are. And this is the boring part, right? Left over right. Uh, Steve, yes, if you do exclamation quilt along, you can go to my website and see the exact block of what I'm making because that's what we're doing today. So in the stream title, you see where it says for information, exclamation quilt along. That's all you've got to do. Can you put the stream deck app on the tablet? 
No, I cannot. Um, it's a different way of doing it. I only have it on my phone, but I can go back and forth. I can go back and forth and have, I'll have chat and stream deck on my phone. It's not a problem. All right, so, because I can just switch back and forth between the apps, right? So, close up. This is row number seven. For row number seven, I am going to the right. So, my arrow's going to the right. So, I'm going to take this right piece over the left and pin it on the right. Just like this. There we are, and then line it up. So right over left, and then pin it on the right. See, I gotta split back and forth. Split screen is, oh yes. Uh, no, I do not have a Samson, I have, a, I have an iPhone. I cannot split screen. But it's fine, I can bounce back and forth. It's not a problem at all. All right, so right over left and pin on the right. That's uh, okay, Miss Elvain. So Steve, uh, you can, if you can sew a straight line on a machine, you can participate. So you can download the block. Of course, you can watch this video on Twitch for a few months, or it's gonna be on YouTube tomorrow. So it's gonna be on YouTube forever, so you can play back this video and do it at any time. There's also participating quilt stores. You can take classes there, either online or in the store. We actually have some stores with us right now that have classes going on. Now, some of these blocks are more complicated than others. There's some of these where we're gonna finish before five o'clock. This may be one of them. This is one of the simpler blocks. Uh, we're only doing two together, then do those. Yes, exactly, exactly, no whammies. So you're sewing them in groups of two together. So you're sewing them in groups of two, and then you'll sew that stack, lay it all out, and then do the same thing, and then sew it in groups of two. So it's a way of piecing it and actually mark, you know, putting it together in a very organized and simple way that anyone can do. Well, that's, that's fine too, Steve. It's funny, whenever I talk to uh, companies about sponsoring me for my streams, for giveaways and things like that, I actually, I'm very honest and I tell them only 40% of my viewers sew. The other 60% just like how I squirrel and I'm all over the place and I try to be entertaining. <laughs> all right, so number six, we're on row number six. Row six, in fact, I'm gonna lay this out so I can actually see the rows, so I can stop counting. There we go. Row number six is to the left. So we're going to the left. There we are, now you can see we're going to the left. So because I'm going to the left, I'm picking up the two pieces, taking the piece on the left, flipping it over the right, and pinning it on the left. Just like that. So left over right, and then pinning it on the left. So, for, oh, that is fantastic, no whammies. No, and like I said, if you can sew a straight line, you can definitely do it. You, 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 I don't squirrel in mystery. I don't squirrel at all, right? I don't squirrel. I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you very much, monkey. That actually means a lot to me. All right, six was to the left. So left over right. If, if you have confidence that you can do it, that actually makes me feel very good. Thank you very much. All right, so we've got that. So left over right. No, there's no squirrels here. I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh-oh. All right, row number six. We have our very 
first lone little piece. So we have our very, very first lone little piece. This little piece is all by itself. It has no friend. It's all by itself. But that's okay. We're going to include this little piece. We're going to take this little piece and just kind of move it over. It's not going to be pinned, but we're including it. So it's all the way over there. So when you have the lone little pieces like this, it's perfectly fine. Just leave it. Just set it there because we're going to include it the next time around. All right. Next one, row number five. Row number five is to the right. To the right. So we're going to take our right piece over the left and pin it in place, just like that. Hey, I'm getting good at this, at, at switching between apps. All right, right over left and pinning it in place. <laughs> just a ton of nuts, yes, yes. Oh, and I don't wanna forget, if you are in the Oaks, Pennsylvania area, the King of Prussia, Oaks, Pennsylvania area, I will be at too many games this upcoming weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I will be doing a trunk show and presentation at Steve's Sew and Back. So Steve's Sew and Back is in King of Prussia. Uh, it is only $10. I will have some giveaways. I will have some prizes. And everyone that's going to be there is going to get something. So your $10 is not going to be wasted at all. So you will definitely be able to do it. Oh, thank you very much, Minion Mama. I appreciate that. I super appreciate that. For those of you watching on YouTube, Minion Mama says, I'm a newbie quilter. I took one quilt class in a store and was lost. I started watching Quiltoni and actually bought her book too. And I have made three quilts in the last year with her and Chat's help. And that's what we do. Oh, look, we got another little lonely piece. We have another little lonely piece all by itself. So we're going to take this lonely piece and we're going to set it up just right there. All right, we're on number four. Four. Row four. So row four is to the left. So we're going to take this left piece over the right and pin it in place. Why do I keep closing that instead of just moving it over? Thank you very much, Saranya. I appreciate that. And yes, as long as you read the directions. We laugh about that because every now and then I will get, um, I will get somebody that um, doesn't read the directions, that will send me an email or a message and, and they ask, well, I don't understand this because of X, Y, and Z. And I'll point out, well, did you read this part of the directions that said this? I either don't get a response back or I'll get, um, I'll get someone saying, oh, sorry, I didn't read that. So, yes, yes. All right, four is to the left. So left over right and pinning it in place. Uh, no whammies. Uh, it takes me about 18 to 20 hours to do a pattern for a block. So I would not do it for you, no, because unfortunately I'm not going to spend 18 to 20 hours of my time working on a block for $3. Now, that being said, my book that they just put in the chat helps you design your own quilts. So you can make your own alternative block with a different design using my book. And that's what it's for is to help you design your own patterns, to design your own things, so that I don't have to do it. <gasps> Wait, what, Geeky Quilter? I don't know what you're talking about. I totally was not gonna call you out. <laughs> I totally was not gonna call you out that, that you know, Hey, hey, what about this part? Wait, did you read these instructions? Oh, oh, okay, okay, yes, okay. As long as you read, now, if you look through it, there are some that are highlighted and some that are not. 
the highlighted sections are stuff that if you know what you're doing, if you've done these patterns, if you've made it before, you can skip those areas. You don't, you don't have, it's just extra instructions. And yeah, words are hard. Words are hard. Yeah, yeah, words are hard. Yeah. Yeah, exclamation book again is how you get my book if you would like to get it. Um, all right, so let's do row number three. Row number three is to the right. So I'm picking this up, right over left, and pinning it into place. Yeah, you would be surprised about some of the emails that I get for people that have picked up my patterns that they just don't read at all. So I had, um, yeah, it's not a video tutorial, it's a book, it's an actual book. So yeah, it's not a video, it's a, because it's a, I have to make money somehow, right? So it's an actual book that you can do it. Um, no, it is not in digital form at this time because there's so many pictures and there's so much going on. I have not yet figured out how to get it into a digital format, um, but it's, a, it's around the world. So it's, you can have the book shipped to you around the world. So it is available on Amazon. If you are not in the States, that is the amazon.com, just change the .com to whatever your ending is. Now, eventually within the next year, it will be in digital format. I just haven't done the work to do that because we have a quilt along. We have other things we're doing, right? So it will be there. Yes, the book does have all the math that you need. And yes, there is a free pattern for the heart. Uh, if you sign up for my newsletter on my website, that you will get a copy of the free heart pattern. All right, this is to the right still. Yes, yeah, it has all the math that you need for figuring out how much fabric you need, um, how, what you need to cut, for all of those things. It is all in the book. And it's almost break time, so after I finish pinning all these, we'll take our 15 minute break. I will put on the, um, the bloopers on a rotation for you. So then that way uh, you're entertained for, for the 15 minutes we're taking a break. Oh, we have a lone little piece. Oh. So I just picked up this last lone little piece, okay? Remember how I was missing a piece of a two and a half by two and a half inch block. I picked up two pieces by accident. So I cut it correctly, the directions were correct, I just picked up an extra piece. Yep. All right, number two. Number two is to the left. So left over right and pinning it in place. Yeah. Yep. That's an oops. I was wondering, I'm like, that does not seem right. How did I not cut that piece? Oh no, I cut it. That's true, that's true. I do want to stab it. I do want to stab it. You know what, maybe it's been 15 minutes, we'll sit and chat. And then I'll cut that part out of YouTube, or I'll just say fast forward to 15 minutes. I may just do, you know what, we'll do that. We'll have a chat session for 15 minutes. I'll do maybe one set of bloopers while I use the restroom, and then uh, do a chat session, and then you can fast forward to 15 minutes on YouTube. I like that, I like that. It was hiding because I wanted to stab it with sharp pins. It doesn't, it doesn't like these sharp things going into it, apparently. That's, it was hiding, I like that. All right, so. You ready to hear one of the things that I got an email from? So one time I got an email from someone. Oh, it was testing me. Oh, um, this is the Grab It. So it is, it, the, it, I love it. It is a, it's called a Grab It. It is awesome. Whenever you, and you can buy these in your local quilt store, and you can also buy these in big box stores. So pins everywhere. 
It's fantastic. Just like that. I love it. It is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic. It was testing me, yes. Yes, yes it was. Yeah, uh, G-R-A-B-B-I-T. All right, last but not least, row number one is to the right. So right over left and pin it on the right. Yeah, grabbits are amazing. They're magnet. It's all I've ever used. And, guys, it's made by the same company that makes Schmetz. The Schmetz Needle Company. The more you know. And I can't do that because, of course, my gift bot's not on whenever we're doing our quilt along. Thank you so much, Geeky Quilter. I appreciate that. But yeah, Gravits are amazing. I love them. They're absolutely fantastic. Don't you guys love my mods? Aren't they wonderful? All right, so I, I will tell you stories during our 15-minute break. All right, so then right to the left. And pin it in place. And last but not least, our last piece is a lonely little piece. So we're just gonna slide him on over there. Look at that, 259. Man, I am good for timing. That is fantastic. All right, so we have all of our things pinned. I will show you my board just so you can see everything. Everything is pinned. These are all my rows, all nine rows. And we're going to take a break. We're going to go ahead and, and, and take a quick 15 minute break. So if you are at a store, feel free to use the restroom, stretch. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, fast forward at 15 minutes. If you're watching at home, we're just going to sit and, and have a, 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 a question and answer. So ask me anything. It's an AMA. And I'm going to tell you some stories. We're going to have some fun. Okay, so. Do you have any fabric stores from Calgary participating? Um, I don't think I have any in Calgary. No whammies. If you take a look at my website, quiltoni.com, you can take a look at the tab uh, for participating quilt stores. It will actually have a listing of all quilt stores that are participating. So I don't think there's any in Calgary though. But yeah, there's a list of uh, participating. The app for the Stream Deck, it is called it's Stream Deck. It's a brand new app from Elgato. Um, it is called Stream Deck Mobile. It does have a fee. It's a small monthly fee. I think it's $3 a month or $25 a year, which is perfectly fine. And guys, you don't have to have an actual Elgato Stream Deck. You just need the software to download it. So you don't have to buy it. So I don't have my Stream Deck with me. I only have it on my phone. And that's it. Yes, water, H2O for water. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Any other, so AMA, ask me anything. Any quilting, sewing, general questions until 3.15. We got 15 minutes. Oh, I'm tired. In fact, you know what? While you guys are thinking of questions and while you're getting the questions together, I'm gonna run um, bloopers really quickly. I don't have my new bloopers on the Be Right Back screen. So I'm gonna run the, my, uh, my starting soon screen that has the bloopers in there. I'm gonna do that round one time and then I'll come back and answer questions and do all the stuff. So I'll be right back. I don't think it's just iOS. I think it's on, it's a couple of, it's a, I think it's also on uh, the Google, on the Google stuff as well. Okay, all right, let me run that while I you go use the restroom for my stretch break. if my mouse would work. Hi, I'm Tony. I am a professional video game comic book quilter. I do this for a living. What did you do after I, la after I was done? But you can't go in on top of that box because you're gonna fall over. Oh, he wanted to go in the box. You're gonna fall. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> he fell over. <laughs> yes, the defend is strong with this chat. Seriously, cat. Okay, Grana has got this weird thing where he goes. Rrr, 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 
<laughs> and then throws up everywhere. Whoops! Whoops! I scared him! <laughs> I scared the cat! What do you think you're doing? Oh, stupid mother! Yes, it's in a Y, and then you want to sew down. Ow! Ow! Ah! Oh my god, oh my funny bone, it's not funny, it hurts. Computer, add a cat to my cart. It looks like Amazon doesn't sell cats. <laughs> Dance. <laughs> imagine seeing that on your television. I know, right? <laughs> Just imagine. All right. Now I have to go over to the um to the computer to do it because I've got to turn the microphone back on again. All right, it is on, it's on Android, isn't it? Oh, I thought it was in there. Okay, all right, so everyone, if you're strolling along with me, stand up. <sighs> We're gonna stretch. That's for stretching time, right? So we went to the bathroom, now it's stretching time. So whenever you stretch, take your arms and you wanna do this all the way out. And you wanna hold it there for 10 to 15 seconds. It increases blood flow into your body and it opens your body up and stretch your fingers. I don't know, it may only be iOS. I thought it was on Android. And then arms up and then bend over and arms down. You don't have to touch your toes or touch the floor or any of that stuff. You just want to hang here. Because we're stretching, right? We're stretching in all the different things. Oh, it's called, oh, that's right, because Kiki, Kiki Quilter is in Australia, so you guys have opposite weather. So, yeah, it's wintertime for you, isn't it? No, yeah, it was just recently released, like, a week or two ago for the Stream Deck app. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's OBS remote control. Yeah, just, um, so it's either, it's, um, Oh, it's, no, no, it's not OBS. It's Streamlabs. Try stream, just type in stream. Um, no, it's not Streamlabs OBS. No, that's not it, Nikki. That's not it. That's not what I use. I use the actual stream deck. So what Nikki is doing is looking at a different one. That's not the stream deck one that I'm using. So there is one that looks like on Google Play, but it's not the one I use. The one I use is stream deck remote. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, it just says Stream Deck. So it's actually part of the Elgato. So that's, I think that's where the confusion is. So I don't know if it's on the Play Store yet, but there is, there's something like it. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, Elgato Stream Deck Mobile, that's it. Yeah, 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 it's not the Streamlabs OBS. It's the Elgato one. Elgato Stream Deck Mobile. So yeah, so it may not be on the Play Store yet. I'm sure it's coming though, because it, it's perfect for the, um, for the Apple. It's perfect hand binding, ooh, yeah. Okay, so it's, pro it's just Apple right now then. That's fine. This is fine. All right, any, so any questions on what we're doing? The block, the quilting, the sewing. Let me show you the quilt again in case you weren't here at the beginning. This is what we are making. So over the course of 13 weeks, actually 14 weeks with one week off, so 13 classes, this is your quilt. 
So this is right here is block number one. Next week we'll do the um, the dog. Block number two. Here's block three. And there you go. There you go. <sighs> Whew. And there's our quilts. Man, this thing's heavy. Now, if you are going to the Steve's Sew and Back trunk show on Wednesday. I will have this with me on Wednesday. You can take a look at it up close. Um, I'm also going to have all four guys, guys, I may have gotten all four tops done for the cosplay quilts. I'm going to have all four if you want to take a look at them in person before they're quilted. I will have them with me on, at Steve's. So yeah. I know, I, so I may have, I may have closeted myself away and done nothing else but work on those last week. Like I stayed up till like 1 a.m. and got up super early every single day because uh, I have to get it done, right? It's gotta get done. I know, right? That's what I was thinking. I looked around because they don't have any, any place here in the studio. So this is their classroom studio here at Tomorrow's Treasures. It's actually separated from the store. That's why you don't hear background noise. Their studio's in a separate building. It's pretty cool. So there's no additional stuff. Um, oh, the fourth one is a uh, Rococo Bell. So you've got um, Anne. Um, um, it's, I'll, show, I'll show them all to you guys eventually. But if you're going to Steve Stowe and back, you actually get to see them in person. Um, but yeah, I looked around, I was like, hey, there's nowhere to hang quilts in here. Like, I may try to bring something to hang quilts. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, so you have regular bell, so classic bell, Anne, Sikizo, and Rococo bell. So her two different bell dresses that she made, for, and they look different, they both were award winning, so we're actually getting two bells in the, um, in the thing. So, yep, there's two. Um, the way, yeah, the way it was described to me, Zarania, Rococo is a style. It's more of a, it's more of a classic, um, uh, what's that called? The historical sewing. It's a classic historical sewing where you take liberties, where you take liberties with, with what you do and how you do it. So it is, um, it's all dependent, right? It's all dependent. A Rococo piano? Wow. I've, I've never heard, I actually never heard of the term Rococo until we, uh, and, until she told me about Rococo Bell. I was like, oh. And then I actually had to ask her, well, what does that mean? So yeah, so it's a different, um, it basically is a different style. You take liberties with it. It's not, it's not accurate. It's not historically accurate at all. It's what you, what, what you want to do, but you get inspiration from, from historical is basically what it is. Does that make sense? Yes, it's, it's, it's your own take on a period thing. Yes, on the period accurate. Yeah, not quite period accurate, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna run um, bloopers one more time, and then we're gonna get back. So if you need to reuse the bathroom or stretch again, I'm putting bloopers on, so when you hear bloopers about to end, that's when you know it is time to come back again and do some sewing. I'm Tony. I am a professional video game comic book quilter. I do this for a living. What did you do after I la after I was? Uh
but you can't go in on top of that box because you're gonna fall over. Oh, he wanted to go in the box. You're gonna fall. No, no, no. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> he fell over. Has <laughs> to defend is strong with this trap. Seriously, cat. Okay, Grana has got this weird thing where he goes. And then throws up everywhere. Whoops! Whoops! I scared. <laughs> I scared the cat. What do you think you're doing? Yes, it's in a Y, and then you want to sew down. Ow! <laughs> ah! Oh my god, oh my funny bone, it's not funny, it hurts. Computer add a cat to my cart. It looks like Amazon doesn't sell cats. <laughs> <laughs> imagine seeing that on your television. I know, right? <laughs> Just imagine. There we go. There's my mic. You like that? You like me? Just imagine. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. I know you laugh, right? Th so that that's a perfect point, Nicole. Um, yes. Ask the chat because I didn't have time this morning because I was working on this stuff. So yeah. Oh, I know. Amazon not selling cats. Yes. Yeah. No. Because I looked at them quickly last night, but of course I'm teaching, so I haven't had a chance to look today. Uh, I'll take a look at it again tonight, though, Nicole. All right. So, guys, let's get back to it. You ready? You ready to uh, to do some more sewing? You ready to get back to it? Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you selling, you stealing my people. Okay. All right. Let's do this thing. Let's start some sewing. So we've got all of our rows. Uh, yes, we're nearly there. So we've got all of our rows, as you see, all lined up. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, when I reach over here, I'm just going to grab a row and bring it over here to actually sew. All right. So that's all that's happening when I reach over to grab it, just so you guys know. And I'm going to do it in the exact order that they're there. So in this case, we, oh, I need my purple thing. Let's do that here. And yes, guys, uh, Nicole is on Discord under Crafty Groomy. And she is a member of my, of my Discord, so you guys should be able to message each other. All right, so let's cut off this scrap right here. And then all I'm doing is in the order that I put them, I'm going to be sewing them. So, and I'm using my quarter inch piecing foot with guide. Now, I'm not cutting in between, we're chain sewing. Remember what I said, whenever we chain sew, we're just putting something constantly in the machine. And I'm not going to use my scrap yet. I'm gonna reach over and grab uh, row number two. And let's just put row number two in. Oh, that's right, I forgot that you used a different name. Okay, never mind. She'll message you. All right, so now I'm gonna cut these off of here. All right. I'm going to take my lovely little uh, 
Kevin Gizmo. It's under exclamation SNP if you want to see information on this. And I'm going to take this and we're going to separate them. So we're going to separate them one at a time. And remember, do as I say, not as I do, don't sew over your pins. And then I'm going to go back again and take my pins out. Now, if you've, if you've taken your pins out as you've sewn like you're supposed to, you don't have to do this now. All right, so we're taking our pins out. Now I'm taking this and laying it down on row number one. All right, let's finish sewing this. There we are. There you are. We've got that one. All right, next one. We're taking row number three. We're just sewing one piece because I've got to cut it. And this is all with efficiency, right? This is how to get it to go faster. We're going to use our snip and we're going to separate them. So let's separate our pieces. And then take the pins out. Any questions on any of that? Either on sewing, on taking, on the, on separating them. It's pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. And then let's finish sewing row number two or eight. I keep forgetting. I went bottom top. So yeah, this is row eight. Sorry. Yeah, you don't have to do the bottom top if you like. If you want, you can go top bottom. The order that you do it doesn't make a difference. Whoops, I had my thread break. And you know what? My bobbin is almost done, so let's change my bobbin while I'm at it. are in the Maryland area. I right now am at Tomorrow's Treasures in Crofton. If you would like to join me for the stream next week live, they are giving these classes for free. They're not charging you at all. So if you want to make block number two, which is the hunting dog in person, feel free to contact Tomorrow's Treasures and sign up. Now, they do ask that you purchase the fabric from them, of course. So make sure you purchase the fabric. And of course, the pattern is free because they will give you the code to download the free pattern. There we go. Thank you so much, EP Quilter. All right, so number four, so nine, eight, seven, six, row six, I'm bringing over. And let's trim this. And then, of course, if you are in the Oaks or King of Prussia area of Maryland, I'll be doing a trunk show and lecture at Steve's Sew and Back. I'm going to be giving some stuff away on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So same time as this one, just a different place. And then I'm back here next Monday. And then I'm home. Now, for you Canadians, um, I will be streaming on July 1. So I will be streaming on Canada Day. So I will be doing it for my home studio. If you are not able to make that stream, it's perfectly fine. You can always tune in and watch the video here on Twitch. Or like I said, I will download it and put it on YouTube the next day. You just don't get the live interaction. Uh, yes, Pennsylvania. So Oaks or King of Prussia, Pennsylvania for uh, Wednesday's lecture, for Wednesday's trunk show and lecture. And I will have a sneak peek of the four pixel quilts that are going to be in my exhibit at Quilt Market Festival in Houston. 
So I've got the tops done. Yep, Oaks, Pennsylvania, or King of, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. No, no, I'll be here in Maryland. Did I say Oaks, King of Prussia, Maryland? <sighs> words are hard. We all know that words are hard. We, we mess up our words, and I, I say wrong words a lot. Because, I, yes, yes, I was just testing the monkey. That was it. That was it. I was testing you. That was absolutely it. Hi, Malfunk. I will see you later, Jose. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. row number four. You know, I remember, oh, I was supposed to tell you stories during break, and I forgot. I could tell you stories now, but I remember whenever I first learned how to quilt, uh, the instructor that I was taking classes from constantly tried to get me to chain piece. And I was like, I don't understand it. I don't, it's not faster. I will just, I have an automatic cutter on my machine. This one doesn't. But my machine then had an automatic cutter. And I said, it just, I'll just cut it every single time. Well, then a lot of my seams would come open. They weren't really, uh, they weren't closed all the way. They weren't sealed. So I didn't understand that chain piecing, doing this, actually helped seal the edges in the beginning and the end. So I think it took a few months for me to truly understand the concept of chain piecing and about how, yes, no, no, it really is much more efficient and much faster. There we go. And then row number three. The other thing I was going to tell you about was some of the emails. Some of the emails I get about my patterns. So all of my patterns, you can find them. If you want the digital pattern, you can find them online uh, on my website. If you would like a paper pattern, they are carried by quilt stores around the world. Uh, if your local quilt store does not have them, just ask, and I can sell it to them. For, a, for the wholesale pricing, it's not a problem. So there are a lot of stores that are able to get my patterns. Um, so they're easy, it's fine. So I got an email one time from a lady. Hello, Aurora. How are you today? I got an email one time from a uh, from a lady who said it was the TARDIS pattern, and she said um, in the email, "I don't think your idea of royal blue is my idea of royal blue, because I bought the fabric at the quilt store and I got home." And my colors were wrong because the, the blue wasn't the right shape. So, yeah, and when you get these emails, how, you know, try to figure out how to respond to them, right? So I think at that point I messaged Nicole and I'm like, can you believe this email I just got? So we responded as a, the official definition of royal blue is this. And I gave her the official definition, which is the shade that we had. And I said, I realize that some people have different ideas of sh different shades. Which is why, if you open the pattern, in the first page, we show you the name of the color next to the shade that we have of the picture. So just like you see here, where you have 
this, these are the shades, and this is what we've named them. So you can see right away which blue we are calling royal blue. She didn't email that. Yeah, exactly. Screen print color does not equal fabric color. Exactly. So it's, it's one of those things where you see the actual finished block. You just go and see where we have listed the colors, and it has the shade next to it. So no, no. She, the, here's the thing, guys. She didn't buy it online or print it online. She bought the pattern from her local quilt store. She had the printed pattern. I think she was trying to get me to give her her money back. She had, and it's not even the monitor. Guys, it's not even any of that stuff. This is a person that had the printed pattern from a quilt store. But even then, even if it's on your monitor, even if you have it printed out, you should be able to see, okay, well, this is what I see is that color. That's what you mean. Okay, so I know it's that. it looks like that on the picture. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And it was some people just like to complain. Um, there was a, a class I was teaching one time. This was a few years ago. It was a quilt class. And I, I normally ask for, um, for feedback anytime I teach classes live. I say, please feel free to give me feedback, good and bad. I always want to improve. And I, and I give people my card. I always do. And this person emailed me. Now, the class was a, a basic, basic pixel design class, OK? So it was a beginner class, it was a basic class, and it was all on the map. It's basically the stuff that's in my book, right? So, oh, and I'm at the very end, I've just did number one, so I'm putting my scrap piece of fabric in. So the email that I got back said, I didn't like how it sounded like you were talking down to me the entire time and you treated me like a child and I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, well let me watch my wording sometimes. Maybe I may have used some wrong words. I don't know. But it's a beginner class. I assume you don't know anything of what I'm teaching you. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. No, and it's, some people just, I, yeah. Yep. So it's, it's, it's quite funny. So some of the emails that I get for my patterns and some of the other things, it's, it's quite funny. All right. We have sewn all of our pieces. I know, right, Ginger? Like seriously, the customer service. All right. So let's switch our camera because, as you see, we have all of our rows sewn. So now we're going to iron and repin it, okay? So row number one, we're going to iron these. I'm gonna lay them out. As you see, I've got them. Now, all I did, now remember, I just picked it up like it was and laid it out. So I know because of the way that I, I, I flipped it and I pinned it and I kept it exactly flat, these are already the direction that I wanna iron it so our seams go the correct way. Okay, so this is going the correct way for ironing. Now you notice all of my seams here line up perfectly because I alternated the seams, I nested them. Oh wow, yeah, these, these really are perfect. 
Not a single one of those is off. That's fantastic. All right, so now I'm going to pick it up. And now I'm going to take a look at row number one. And the arrows go to the right for row number one. So I'm going to take my seams. And all of these seams go to the right. So now I should be able to lay this out just like this. And there is our first row. So our first row is perfect. It's all laid out. It is perfect. It is amazing. <coughs> all right, so row, now this is going to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Our lonely little piece over here is gonna get included. So we're gonna take our right piece over the left and pin it in place. And that is what we're doing now. So I call this my second pass. So right over left and pin it in place. Now there's another shortcut that I can do as well, but I'm not gonna get into that for this quilt because we're assuming this may possibly be your first time making a quilt like this. So I'm gonna show you the very simple way to do it. Oops, come on pin, there we go. All right, now for my second row, same thing. I'm gonna lay these pieces out. And we're gonna iron them. Now I laid them out, I did not flip anything, so they should be in the exact same way it needs to be ironed. There we go. Now, if you wanna do it technically, whenever I laid it on my ironing mat, I laid it down from right to left, and then I picked it up left to right. So if you want it in the exact order that you're gonna be laying it out. All right, in this case, row eight is pointing to the left. So I'm gonna lay all these pieces out just to make sure I didn't flip anything the wrong way and making sure that everything looks good. So. Everything, nope, I didn't flip anything. Everything looks good. Now with row eight, remember we're going to the left. So we're picking up the left piece over to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. There's only five pieces. I can leave that one alone. That's perfectly fine. And I'm gonna pin that center one first because this is my nested seam. So as you see here, my opposite seams, I'm gonna make sure I pin that first so my seam is lovely and nested. And then left over right. Pin the center and pin the ends. And let's move this one back. All right, and then row number seven. So whenever I lay them out, I'm laying the pieces out right to left. Okay, and then ironing. Come on, there we go. It didn't want to catch. Now, when we sew the actual rows together, you'll see why it's important that we alternate the seams in certain Thank ways. Thank you for subscribing to This is to the right. Grab your needles and hey, head down to the sweatshop. This one's to the right. Uh, I, I mean, so my seams are to the right. Good morning. Good morning, Azure Koi. How are you today? So my seams are to the right, and then I'm laying my pieces out. All right, so let's double check to make sure this all looks good. Green on top, yes, yes. That all looks great. All right, so to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces. We're taking the right over the left and pinning it in place. There we are, right over left. Oops, it looks like my, uh, my seam went a little wonky there, so let's fix that. I'm gonna make sure my seam goes in the one direction, not the band. 
All right, and this is to the right. Let's make sure we fix that. Make sure we get that again. Okay, right over left and pin it in place. There we go. It is, it is bubble sore day. Exclamation quilt along. If you would like to go pick up this pattern. If you are on YouTube, the link is down below. And I went right over left. Because remember the arrows go to the right and when the arrows go to the right, you're picking up the right over the left. All right, row six. Now, remember, row six had that lonely little piece. So row six is to the left. I'm gonna pick up this lonely little piece. And when I count, I have five pieces. Well, if I start from the top again, this lonely little piece is gonna get left out again. We don't wanna leave him out. So I'm gonna take this first piece and set that first piece aside. He's already been included. So it's okay if we leave him out. So then now, let's lay everything else out. Let's see, this is row six, yes. Okay, so making sure I've got everything right. There we go. This all looks good. Now, we're leaving this one alone. We're leaving him out. And row six is, is to the left. So we're picking up the left piece over the right piece and pinning it in place. So if it's a lonely little piece that was not included in the previous pass, Make sure you include it. And what that's going to do is it's going to manage your fabric better to, so you don't have a super long piece and then a little tiny piece over here. It's going to even it out a bit. All right, so let's go right to left. and then pick them up left to right. Now I have four pieces, and again, there's four, and that's a fifth. Now row five, I need to go to the right. Okay, let's lay this out. Let's make sure everything looks good for row five. Has anyone else left a piece out there? Thank you very much for picking up that pattern. I super appreciate it. And I've got that. Okay, so we have five pieces. Uh, the only little lonely little piece back here. So we're gonna leave this one out. And we're gonna go, this is row five. So we're going to the right. So I'm picking up my right piece over the left. Good morning, or good afternoon, Jan Bear. Good evening where you are. How are you today? You guys like my cash register sound effect? There we are. All right, row four. Let's iron this. When I'm home in my studio, I actually have a big old thing that flashes that says Quotoni has a sale. Whenever someone get, picks up something on my website. And that goes off even if you have a code from a store. It's fantastic. I know. Happy time zone. Exactly. Thank you very much, Jan Bear. I super appreciate you. All right. One, two, three. Okay. This is number four. Number four is to the left. I have no lonely little pieces, so I don't have to worry about including anything. There we are. So this is row four to the left. So I'm gonna go left over the right. Yes, it's good early morning for Geeky Quilter. Afternoon in the States and evening in Europe. So good morning, good afternoon, and good night. I should say good evening. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Because night is like a goodbye. And this is, we're not goodbye. We still have an hour and 15 minutes left. We still have to finish sewing these rows together and then square up our block. And then our lonely little piece is gonna go right there. All right, three more. 
That is one of the beauties that I love about Twitch. It doesn't make a difference where you are in the world. You can still be a part of a big quilt along like this. Yeah, the only ones that I couldn't include live were my Australian people, my Australian and my New Zealand people. All right, this is to the right because I just couldn't seem to get a time zone to fit with everyone. So all of my North American, South American, and Europeans, I was able to get you in. And then there, and then there, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that guy's gonna be all lonely. So I have to make sure to include it. There's a lot of pieces to this one, so I'm just making sure it's good, yes. So I'm gonna leave this one here. I'm not gonna include this piece because I have a lonely little piece all the way over here. I wanna make sure that I include. So this is right to left, so right to left. There we go, right to left. And right to left. All right, two more rows and then we're gonna start sewing again. Any questions, any issues, any problems? Has anyone run into anything yet? Or it's pretty straightforward and you got it. Oh, I got one that's off by a little bit. All right. There's no way you're gonna see that unless I point that out, that that's kind of off a little bit. So, someone in chat, please tell me what the three foot rule is. All right, seems to the left, so this needs to go to the left. I'm going to lay these out just to make sure everything is okay. And right over left and pin it in place. There we go. Right over left and pinning it in place. So three foot roll, what is it? And last but not least. There we go. You have just followed and this Rotary. goes to the right. Your taste must be exquisite. Um, Lyric you, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. All right, so I've got that one to the right, to the right, and then there. All right, one, two, three, four, and this is the top one, so right over left, and then pinning it in place. All right, the last thing I see in chat is 942. I assume I have to reset my app, so let me reset my app because I know I asked a few times for you guys to give me some stuff and I don't see it, so that tells me my chat must have frozen. So, let's go back into it. And back into here, there we go. All right, now I've got chat back up again. What did I miss? Did anyone give me a three foot roll? All right, it's the right to the left. If you can't see the mistake from three feet away or more, you need new glasses. <laughs> no, that's not it. That's, that's not the three foot roll. Not, not Jan Bear, come on, you, that's, not, that's not true. That's not true, you knew that. 
I, I know Jan Bear knows the three foot rule. If you can't see it from three feet away, don't worry about it. Exactly. Exactly, Nikki. If you cannot see it from at least three feet away, so whatever your mistake is, hang it up, walk away three feet. If you don't see it right away, no one is ever, ever going to see it. No one will ever see it unless you point it out. So don't point it out, period. All right, let's do some sewing. So again, I'm picking these up and I'm sewing them. And again, I'm chain sewing while I'm doing it. Chain sewing allows me to speed up the process. It saves thread. Unless I do an HG close up, yes. It also allows you to seal the beginning and ends of your threads. All right, so let's take that. I'm going to set that aside. I'm just going to finish this here. Now, the sewing of this is actually going to take a little bit less time because we have half the number of, uh, of pieces. Hello, how are you, Snappy Panda? There we are. And next. And all, and again, I'm not ironing. I'm not pinning. I'm not doing anything at all except for sewing these pieces. There we are. I just realized I fibbed a little bit earlier when I said I was done with all four quilts. I'm not quite done with the Rococo Ann yet, but I will be by Wednesday morning. That is what I'm working on tonight and most of the day tomorrow. I should get her finished. Should. Should is the optimal word. Should. I will get her finished. So you guys on Wednesday that come and visit me, at Steve's Sew and Back. Yes, the fourth cosplay quilt is Rococo Bell. So the, um, for those of you that come see me at uh, Steve's Sew and Back, you'll be able to see it. I will have it done for you. That's my goal. That's my goal. I said and, oh. Words, again with the words. Words are hard. Man, words are just so hard. Man. Yes, Rococo Bell. I'm almost I'm not done with Rococo Bell. Man, those words. They're all they're so hard to, to remember. Yes. Yes, Nikki, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to test my mods and keep you on your toes. You believe that, right? You believe that? come out and it's put lines on the wall behind me. It's been an overcast day most of the day. I didn't even realize with the, this place has so many windows, it's gorgeous. I didn't even realize with the windows, with how it is. Whoops, oops, oops, I forgot to trim it. It was only two though, that's fine. With the windows how they are, that apparently it's uh, super bright. And it's toe. I like that. I like that. Very, very well done. Very well. Uh, for those of you that are regulars to my channel, our giveaways that we normally do, uh, we will not be stopping to do them on Mondays while we're doing this quilt along. 
And the reason is we have to make sure we get the quilt along finished within a four hour period. Because we have people joining us from around the world live in classrooms right now. So all of the quilt alongs that we have accrued during this stream will be done next Tuesday evening. So if you are watching from a quilt store around the world, quilt or sewing store around the world, if you would like to join us for those giveaways, make sure you're here between 6 and 9 p.m. next Tuesday evening. So all of the giveaways from today and from next Monday will be done next Tuesday in the evening. All right. Second pass is done. Let's iron and pin for the third pass. All right, same thing. So I'm going to be taking it row by row. And let's take a look at it. So row number six, nine. Row number nine. Man, now I'm messing up my numbers. Now numbers are hard. I think uh, one of the emotes for the future that I may do is math hard. Because I have words are hard. But I'm thinking math hard. All right, so... To the right, so this is row number nine. So to the right. Now, here's the trick. I have three pieces for this one, all right? We are going to cheat a little bit and sew all three at the same time. So I'm gonna, here's my center piece. I'm gonna take this left piece. Oh, first let's make sure it's right. Yes, that is right, that is correct. So now I'm gonna take this left piece I'm gonna flip it over the center. Make sure that my seams line up right there, that they nest. We're gonna pin it. And we're gonna do the hair. Oh, Snappy Pandy, I am doing a, um, a worldwide quilt along right now. We're doing block number one, exclamation quilt along. I am at uh, Tomorrow's Treasures, teaching the class live as well as on the internet. And then so number three, we flipped over to the center and now we are pinning that one in place. And we have our lovely piece with two seams on either side. There we are. All right, now number eight. Thank you for subscribing to Quiltone. Let's go ahead and now iron this one. Head down to the sweatshop. I, I mean, thank Patrick you. Pirate, thank you so much for that oh, resub. Yeah. I super appreciate you. Thank you very much. 17 months. Wow. 17 months. Thank you. Thank you very much for that resub. I super, super appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. And so this is number eight. So eight, the seams need to go to the left. Let's go ahead and line this up. Let's make sure that everything is correct. It is great. So this is also three pieces. So we're gonna take this left, left piece, flip it over the center, and pin it. And then we're gonna take this right piece, flip it over the center, and pin it. There we go. Now for the next one. You seeing, see the pattern? See what we're doing now? All right, this is number seven. This is to the right. And let's lay these out. Make sure that everything is good. Yes, everything is great. So we're gonna take this left piece, flip it over the center. Now, this left piece over the center is the same exact size. So I'm actually going to take it and fold it over a little bit and then pin it. There we are. Now, this is folded. It's not going to be part of our actual seam. It's folded in there though. Now, the right one, same thing. I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna lay it over, 
and fold it over and then pin it. There we go. And we're going to lay this out right here. All right, row number six. There we are. And let's lay, lay row number six out. Now, this first one's already sitting there. Seams are to the left. So we're doing that. Same exact thing. We have our three pieces. So our piece over the left, over to the right. I don't have to fold it because it's shorter than the center block. And let's pin it. And then we're going to take this right one, flip it over, and pin it. There we go. Let's do this one. This is row number five. Okay, row number five goes to the right. There we are, making sure that looks correct. It does, no. Yes, yes it does. Oh, I was looking at the wrong row. I almost scared myself. Okay, left over to the center. Now remember, investing in a good seam ripper is a great thing. Everyone makes mistakes. And then the right one goes over the center. I do not care who you are. I do not care how long you have been quilting or sewing. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone needs to use a seam ripper now and then. It's perfectly okay. It is just fine if you make a mistake. Remember that. And just like I said, my, a couple of my quilts that I have in my exhibit that are going to be in Houston in October, November, have flipped pieces. And there are mistakes in them. And that's okay. And not worry. All right, to the left. So this goes to the left. Let's go here. We are to the left. I'm taking my left piece, flipping it over my right. And I'm doing this and I'm pinning it in place. And I'm doing this. My niece and nephew just stopped by to say hi and see what I'm doing, which is why I did this, because I don't want them chatting while we're filming, of course. And then taking the right piece, flipping it over, and doing that. Now, because you're under the age of 18, I cannot put you on camera without, you are old enough, but I have to have permission of both of your parents, which I do not have yet. Bodhi, you are not quite yet old enough, but if you guys want to say hi off camera, you're more than welcome. Hi. 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 Hi, Papa. Yeah, you guys know my father. You know my father. Except on his shoe. Yes. All right, so we are in row number three. Okay, goodbye. Hi. Goodbye, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Row, row number three. Row number three. Let's get this ironed. Yeah, my niece is 13. My nephew is 11. Oh, and they, they, you guys said hi, and they've already gone. I'll tell them at the house. So they're visiting uh, my. They're visiting my parents while I am here this time. All right, row number three, we are to the right. So let's lay this out. Uh-oh, it looks like we're gonna have to have another pass just for this one because we have four pieces. We can't do this all just in one. All right, so four pieces. So this is row number three to the right. So right over left and pin it. Yeah, my niece and my nephew are visiting my parents this week while I'm here. So I get to see them and say hi. They live down in Charlotte, North Carolina. All right, we've got that and that 
Fantastic. All right, row number two. Row number two. All right, it is to the left. I've got that. All right, we only have two pieces for row number two. This is fantastic. I can just take my left piece, flip it over my right, and pin that in place. There we go. Perfect. Now, row number one. Same thing. It looks like I only have two pieces. This is wonderful. That is so easy when that happens. Okay, so to the right. And anyone that's not familiar with Twitch, the terms of service is you must be 13. 13 to stream or technically be part of Twitch. Now, of course, if you have your parents with you, that is perfectly fine. But I do not want to show my niece or nephew on there unless, of course, I have permission of both of my, their parents and they're at least 13. All right, this is it. So we have one row, one row that has two pieces. So let's go ahead and sew this one first. Let's sew this and iron it and take care of this one. And then we will start grouping them up and take care of them all. All right. I got this. Any questions on any of this up to this point? I know, right? There's always one. There's always one that just seems to be left. And you're like, why can't you just be part of the, of the whole thing? Like, why do you have to be different and unique and be separate, right? All right, so we've got that. Let's take these and do this. Now, this is row number three. Row three is to the right. So let's make sure. And yes, I always check because I flip pieces. Even whenever I check, I still seem to flip pieces. All right, row three, right to left. Let's do this. And there. Great, okay. All right, we've got that. Now, we're finished with the rows, guys. We just have to finish sewing it and ironing it, and then we can combine our rows together. I'm getting there. All right, I always group them up. So whenever you have groups of, um, when you have groups of, of the three, of the one on either side, I group them up, even the singles. So we have, we have nine rows, so we have one lonely little ro row over here by itself, so I basically combine them in twos. Because remember, just like when we combine at all of our pieces as we're putting it together that way, we always want to group them up. When you group them up, it makes it a lot simpler. It makes it a lot easier. All right, here's how we do our threes. Remember how we did one on either side? So we put one in, put the other in, trim it, and flip it. So I've already sewn this side. So now I'm turning it to sew the other side. It's a more efficient way of combining your strips together, turning it. It's faster. It saves time. It's fantastic. All right, let me grab the next two rows. So at this point, all I'm doing is sewing everything that I just did. All right. Now, let me take these pins out. It does not matter which row is which, because after I iron it, I'll figure it out. So I'm just gonna stack them together in a set of two, and set it aside. Uh, and let's trim this and flip. And 
trim and flip. Now, if this is the very first time that you have done one of my quilt patterns, every single one of my patterns is exactly the same. Exactly the same instructions, exactly the same setup, exactly the same breakdown. So this way, if you understand how to do my patterns, you can do any of them, any of them. And if you're new to quilting, if this is your first time making a quilt pattern, my patterns are not like any other quilt patterns. They're different. Um, please keep that in mind when you go to do another pattern. Because unfortunately, there are patterns out there, there are quilt patterns out there that assume you know all things quilting. They assume you understand that when you sew pieces together, that you do right sides to right sides. They assume you know what nesting the seams are. So please keep that in mind whenever you look at other patterns. All right, I think my twitch Aired out. It's been a while since I've seen chat. So I'm resetting it. I'll let you know when I have it back up again. It's thinking. Oh, I may have to reset it again. Yep. Hopefully you haven't had any major issues or questions or things like that. chat. Let's see if I can get it on here. Oh, there we go. All right, I think I've got it up on my iPad now, even though my iPhone is not working. So if someone could say something in chat just to make sure. There we go, technical difficulties. Thank you very much, Nikki, I appreciate it. Yes, I've got it now. Oh, there we go, now I've got it on my phone again. Wonderful. There we go, perfect, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. What's a seam? A seam geeky quilter is what you're sewing. Remember how I said ironing the seams in different directions? The seam is what your two pieces of fabric sewn together, that piece of little fabric that's hanging on the end, that's what a seam is. Any other questions? Did I miss anything while I had no, uh, no chat? All right, this last little one, I'm going to leave in there. Chat was quiet, fantastic. Fantastic, thank you very much. All right, now, oops. The rose. This right here is my favorite, favorite part of patterns, of especially my quilt patterns. This is my favorite part. So, first two rows. We're gonna take them and I'm going to iron both seams the correct direction. Whoops, whoop, hold on, I did it the wrong way. <laughs> I ironed the seams the wrong way. They should go this way. There we go. That way. And if you iron them the wrong way, it, all you have to do is re-iron it. Uh, Ace, great question. How long does it take me to do a quilt start to finish? One of my quilt patterns, one of my standard lap size quilt patterns, it can take me a day. 
start to finish. If all I'm doing is sitting down and quilting, I can do one of my quilt patterns in a day, which is why people wanted me to start selling my patterns to begin with. All right, so row eight is to the left, row nine is to the right. So the more complex ones take me a lot longer. So the, um, the quilts that I have in my exhibit in Houston, those are taking me about 120 to, to 200 hours a piece. All right, so here, we're gonna take the bottom, we're gonna flip it over the top, and then I'm gonna pin along here. Now, here's what we wanna do. We wanna find all of our seams. So right here is a seam where the two meet up, and I'm putting a pin there. After I do this, I'm gonna go back and find any other seams, and then the end and put them in. So now I'm gonna go find the next seam right here, Right here is the next seam that lines up. So let's put a pin in that one. And then we're going to go back and put pins in all of the other seams. Now, it's important that you put pins in the seams because as you're sewing it and putting it in the machine, you don't want them to flip up. You don't want them to get caught. You want them to be sewn down just like they are. All right, let's find the next one. Oh, it's all the way down here. All right, let's put a pin in there. And then we'll go back and put pins in all the other seams. Now, in this case, back to Monkey's question about putting pins in things. Now, it is important that you put pins in these. If you don't put pins in where it connects right here, then, whoops, that really big pin's annoying me. If you don't put pins, if you don't put pins all the way down, if you just put it in your machine and try to sew it, it's not going to line up. You're not gonna have perfect points. That's the whole point of nesting your seams, of alternating the way that they are is so that you can, they can line up perfectly. All right, so there's that, and that, whoops, there we are. Now, I know that it's done correctly. If it, I'm looking at it, if my seams are facing down, that's how I know that I'm looking at it correctly to iron it the right way. Because as I iron it, if I flip it over, my seams are now going straight up. So as I'm looking at it, it should be the seams down, and then as it flips up, the seams go up. All right, rows seven and six. This one is seven, it goes to the right. Seam number, row six goes to the left. There we are, and it lines up just like that. And let's flip the bottom up to the top. Let's find our first seam is right here. So we're gonna nest that, put a pin in it. Let's go back and put pins in the others. Now, for this quilt, you figure about four hours per block, there's 12 blocks. So 12 times four, whoops, that was not one. This one is right here. What's 12 times four? I'm tired. I've been streaming all day. I can't math. 12 times three is 30, 48, 48. 12 times four is four, thank you. I thought of it just as you guys put it in chat, 48. So you have 48 hours for the blocks and then another four hours for assembly. So it'll be about 52 hours for this quilt that we are putting together. So if you are doing the quilt along with us, with all the blocks, it is a 52 hour quilt. Now that's just for the top. There's gonna to be another probably four hours for quilting and binding. So that's 56 hours. There we are. All right, that one is done. So we can set that aside. Now for this one. 
let's do this. Here we are. And then that one. Whoops. There we go. Is everyone frantically uh, assembling their rows like I am, trying to to get it done within the four-hour period? Now, of course, if you don't get it done within this four-hour period, that's perfectly fine. All right, this is row five. Nope, this is row five. And this is row six. There we go. That is correct. Now, if you don't get it done within the four hours, that is perfectly fine. You can always go back and re-watch this video on Twitch. You can pause, you can rewind, you can fast forward. It will also be available on YouTube tomorrow. So as soon as I finish, I will head back to my parents' house here in Maryland and I will download this video. I'll clean it up a bit. And then first thing tomorrow morning, I will upload it onto YouTube. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. So if you have not yet followed my YouTube, if you would like to, exclamation socials, to see my YouTube, as well as my Facebook, my Twitter, and my Instagram. I also post on all three of those when I go live here on Twitch. If you would like to get a notification. There we are. And the last group. All right. Thank you very much for following that YouTube. I appreciate it. And here is that to the left. This is to the right. There we are, and that looks good. Let's flip the bottom up to the top and pin it in place. Perfect. Now, if you want, if you're new to Twitch, if you're new to my stream, if you have not yet done it, please hit that follow button. It's in the upper right hand corner. It's that little heart. If the heart is full, it means you have already followed me. If it is empty, if it's a, a, an empty heart, that means that please push that button and you can follow. Basically, if you see a, if, if you see a sub button next to it, it means you followed. If you don't see a sub button next to it, it means you have not. Now, it doesn't make a difference if you unfollow and follow me, but some people like to keep track of how long that they have been following me. If you would like to do that, exclamation, followage, F-O-L-L-A-G-E, you can actually see how long you've been following me. For those of you that have been with me for a few years. Now, if you un, oh wait, maybe not. It's not, oh, oh, there's a W in there. F-O-L-L-A-W-A-G-E. Did I spell it wrong? Words are hard. Words are hard. Man. You can't all do it at the same time, though. You do have to have a little break. So, kitties, do it again. If you do it at the same time, it airs out. <laughs> There we are, we've got that one, perfect. All right, so I'm actually going to do it backwards now. Yeah, kitties, do it again if you want. All right, let's sew these rows. Yes, kitties, did you unfollow and refollow me or did you change your screen name? If you accidentally hit that unfollow and follow button, it resets it. That's what I mean. If you accidentally hit that button, all right, that's going to be at the top. There we go. Now, remember, this is now rows two and three. That is row one. This is rows two and three. I'm going to go backwards.
Exactly, and that's what happens sometimes. And that's, if you unfollow, follow, it's not a big deal. And sometimes Twitch itself has errors and it will unfollow you from people. Now, it hasn't happened lately, but sometimes whenever they have software issues, th it'll happen. Yep, I know. Um, and just as an FYI right now, okay, so those two are gonna go together. That is rows one and two and three. Uh, I just got a notification here in Crofton at Tomorrow's Treasures. We are under a severe thunderstorm warning. So, if for some reason we lose power here, I want to make sure that you are aware that I will come back and finish it as soon as the power is up. If it looks like we're gonna lose power for a while, I will put a notice on all of my social media and we will finish block one at the beginning of next Monday when we start block two. Now, I don't think it's gonna happen. They rarely lose power here, but it's a possibility, which is why I wanna point it out. Yes. Yeah, no, and it's it's pretty hot down here. I think my grandfather my grand my father was taking my niece and nephew to the pool. And I think they were stopping in here on the way back to the house. All right. Now I am not going to zoom in on this well because you can basically so actually i should i should that way you can see what i am doing all right so this is row number one okay there's row one that looks good now rows two and three i'm gonna iron it it does not make a difference which way you iron this you can iron it towards the top, you can iron it towards the bottom. You can even iron it open at this point if you want. Honestly, it's not gonna make a difference for the bulk for your quilting if you iron it open at this point or not because everything else has already been lined up. Now at this point you may, if you're ironing it to the side, you may have issues, which is why I did that. I turned it over and re-ironed it because it has issues sometimes. There we go. And there is that. All right, so let's flip this. And let's iron this. Let's pin this. Yes, kitties, I have the Stream Deck app on my phone. It is new to the phone. It is on, um, I believe, iPhone only at this point. But yes, no, I can control it on my phone. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like in the States, it's almost non-stop thunderstorms and tornadoes at this point. Like any time I come down to the States and I just drove down here all day yesterday, I was driving from my home in London, Ontario, down here to, to uh, Crofton, Maryland. And of course, I turn the news on and all I see is thunderstorms and tornadoes. All right, so there's that one. Now let's do this one. So I'm gonna iron this. It does not make a difference which way you iron it. If you iron it up, if you iron it down, or if you iron it open, it is whatever your preference is. And it goes that way. Now, if you're just joining us for this quilt along, these fabrics are from the stone, uh, from the Stonehenge, from the Northcott, the Northcott Toscana line. The Toscana line is a gorgeous, vibrant, amazing line of fabrics that I am in love with. Like, I think I'm gonna like find out who designed this and be like, you're amazing. Wait, one, so it was three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it goes this way. 
I had it wrong. There we go. Yep, that is correct that way. I'm just looking at my design, just making sure, yes, that is absolutely correct. Fantastic. And let's pin this. Hey guys, we're almost done. We only have to sew these two more rows, pin them together, iron it, and square up our block. And we are done. And then we'll be back here again next Monday. Remember, if you are in the Maryland area, contact Tomorrow's Treasures. It's an amazing, awesome, fantastic quilt store. And sign up for the free, free quilt class next Monday. Uh, MCHAB, this is the, it's all on my website as well. Um, if you take a look at the quilt along site on my website, I have yardages of the exact colors, but it is the Northcott Toscana, T-O-S-C-A-N-A, -S the Toscana line. It's by Northcott. It's an amazing, awesome, fantastic line, but I have color charts. Um, I have everything. So whenever you click on that link, if you look at the menu in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see Quilt Along. Just click on Quilt Along, scroll to the bottom, and you have yardages as well as a chart that tells you which fabric you need for which block. You're welcome. And of course, that's also the link if you want to go ahead and purchase this block. The bubble sword block. Whoops, there we go. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I am going to be putting links in on YouTube to the charts. So if you would like the uh, chart for the fabrics for Toscana, so which skew you need to get for each one, as well as the, um, the color charts, um, the yardages, and the breakdown of per block. Uh, I will have all of that in the links underneath, so you can find those down below. There we are. All right, so we have our three. Now, I already showed you how we're ironing this, so I'm not going to show you again for a close-up because, guys, we are down to the wire. It is the final countdown. The final countdown. Do, 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 do. This is the moment of truth. This is the moment of truth. Did Tony flip any pieces that she did not catch? How is this going to look? There we are, all right. So at this point, we now have three pieces. Remember, what do we do with three pieces? We have our center piece. We take our bottom, we flip it up off the top, and we pin it in place. No, I did not make another bob. No, I am not sewing these upside down. So we're taking this, flipping it up, and pinning it in place. Did I make another bob? For those of you that missed the bloopers, I sewed Bob's head, uh, Bob Ross, for my pattern. I sewed his head on upside down whenever I initially made the quilt on my stream. All right, just to remind you, this mat that I'm using is from Martelli. It is a fantastic, awesome, super thick, Amazing mat. I don't think I'll ever need another one again. My rotary cutter is also from Martelli. 
The iron is from Oliso. If you would like a discount code for an Oliso iron, exclamation iron. You can also find the Aliso irons in your local quilt and sewing stores. They do carry them in the big box stores. However, you cannot use coupons on them. They are never on sale. If you're going to purchase it from a store, please go to your local quilt and sewing store and purchase it from them. It will be the same exact price as if you went to a big box store and you are supporting a mom and pop. <coughs> Man. I love how my mods are like fighting each other to get to the uh, the commands. I love you guys. All right, and everyone, as we're going through our final countdown, everyone, please thank our two amazing mods. Please thank Geeky Quilter and Nikiana. They will both be joining us for almost all of the quilt alongs, unless of course one of them has plans, then they'll be replaced by somebody else just for that week. But these are your two mods. They will be with us every single week for the most part for our quilt along. You'll see their lovely faces. Well, the lovely names. Especially Geeky Quilter who, what, it is what, 4 a.m. there? Geeky Quilter, who is an Australian, or lives in Australia. It's like 4 a.m. where he is. You guys are awesome, thank you very much. And the reason why they were picked and why they're amazing is Geeky Quilter is, of course, in one of my pattern testers. So he understands this pattern inside and out. So if you have questions on the pattern, if I don't see it, he's able to, oh, it's 6.30 now, 6.30 a.m., yeah. He's able to answer them. And Nikki has taken classes from me live. She's actually taken live classes. So if you have any questions on any of that stuff, she's able to answer it. They're amazing. All right, just the same thing. Remember, we've got it on both sides. So we're going to sew the one side, flip it. I'm gonna use my scrap this time. Turn it on the other side. And then sew the other side. And this is it. This is the final countdown. So if you have any other questions or concerns about this block, ask them now. All right, let's take our pins out. Uh, we do have some fantastic mods here. I, I love my mod. I love you guys. I love my community. All right, let's just say thank you to everyone that's here and everyone that's hanging out. You are one of the best communities here on Twitch. You're amazing and I love you. You're absolutely fantastic. You make me happy. You are just amazing. All right, let's iron it. Let's iron it and take a look. Let's see. Is everything lined up? Did I flip a piece? Did I make a mistake? Let's turn it. And I know you cannot see what I'm doing and I did that on purpose because we have to have a big reveal, right? All right. He's done. And a crack of thunder happens. Oh, that was great timing. Fantastic, there he is. Oh, you're, okay, oh wait, sorry. There we go. Oh no, they're all flipped. You like, you like how he, you like how he, he, he tries to, uh, and of course now, now I'm paranoid and I'm looking at my pattern. Just making sure. Yeah, everything's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's fantastic. All right. Let me show you how we square our block up now. 
All right, so we are squaring our block to 18 inches by 18 inches. At this point, oh, I didn't bring my 18 incher, did I? Oh, I did, ha ha! My big, long 24 inch ruler, fantastic. All right, so there's two ways that you can do this. You can get a large square up um, mat or a square up ruler. This ruler only goes to 12 and a half inches, so I cannot use this for a square up. It's 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So that's not gonna work. I do not have an 18 by 18, so most people don't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our cutting mat. We're gonna use our cutting mat in order to square this up properly, okay? Now, I'm actually gonna turn my cutting mat to go this way. So let's change our camera angle. And I'm going to show you how we're going to square this up. So this is the final, the final step. So let's move this over. Whoops. There we are. Let's move this over. All right. So squaring this up. Now, you see all this lovely mess right there? All right. Let's make sure first how... All right, so it's about 18 inches by 18 and about 18 and a quarter by 18 and a quarter. So what I want to do first is get my rotary cutter. Is I'm just going to skim the edges. Now I'm actually going to use my seams that I've sewn to straighten it. So I'm just going to skim the very, very edge. So here is my smallest point right there. All right. Take all that aside. Now, I'm going to line this up right here along there. And then I'm going to turn this. Mm. Iron it some more. It's not ironed out as flatly as I would like. Make sure it's completely ironed out before you do this. There we go. Okay, now let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay, so that is my flat one. That's the one I just cut. There we go. Now the eight, look at that. It's right to the 18. If it's just shy, that is perfectly fine, okay? So, where is the 18? There it is. Let's make sure it's all lined up. Perfect. All right, let's cut it. Now, I can't go all the way here because it's, it's a short mat. So at this point, I can shift this down and I don't need the actual mat because I can line it up using my ruler to make sure I've got a nice straight shot. There you go. And there's the little end bit. There's my trash pile. All right. Now, for either end, let's make sure, is that 18? Oh, beautiful, look at that. That's a beautiful 18 inches, nice. All right, now to do the other side. It was about the same. All right, so let's line this up. Now, obviously, if you have a larger cutting mat, it is a lot easier to do.
This is my travel cutting mat, so it's a little bit smaller. That is not good. This one's just a little shy of 18. Oh yeah, look at that. It's got a, a cute chunk over there. All right, so let's make this just a little bit shy of 18, going right to left. Cut it off. There we go. And that's it. I have my block. My block, it's finished. Look at that, with 15 minutes to spare, and it's already lined up. Any questions? Now, of course, if you have a large mat, it's easier to position it in a way to make sure it's centered. Of course, if you have a square up ruler, it's even better. So, any questions? on making the block, on squaring it up, on any of that stuff. Any last minute questions at all? And I think my chat's dead again. All right, let me pop back in here. There we go. Oh, Hyper Zen Girl, okay. Yep, nope. Okay, the last thing that I saw was Geeky Quilter said, perfect and industry put a bunch of emotes in. What did I miss? This is the only problem with doing it on mobile, right? So any last minute questions, things like that, I assume Geeky Quilter answered a question. Oh, the others were answered? You guys are amazing. My mods are perfect. You guys are awesome. You guys are absolutely awesome. You're fantastic. I love you guys. All right, so we're good. We got a block. We have block number one. Thank you guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for doing block number one. Now, remember, if you joined us late, we are doing our giveaways for today, next Tuesday night between 6 and 9 p.m. I think I may have figured out how to play marbles on the road. So we're going to play some marbles, we're going to do some giveaways, we're going to do some things, and I have some stuff to unbox. So if you want to see some of the cool things that have been sent to me, I will unbox all of that. Thank you very much for being here. So with that being said, the next stream is not going to be till next Monday. I will be back here doing this again next Monday from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're in the Maryland area, make sure you contact Mars Treasures if you want to be part of it. But don't forget this Wednesday, I will be at Steve's Sew and Back in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. If you want to come and join me, I will do a trunk show and all sorts of things. All right, so let's see. Where do we want to take our love? Where do we, ooh, I like that, I like that. Yes, yes. Now, here's the thing on Mondays. We're gonna make sure we go to uh, some really cool streams. You know what? Geeky Quilter, you're funny. Technically I did a bob, yes, yes, yes. All right, so thank you very much for being here. We are going to go to a friend of mine who is also another family-friendly streamer. Uh, she is a woodworker. So, if you have not yet followed her, please give her a follow because she is absolutely amazing. We are going to go raid the amazing, awesome Bonsai Baby. So, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you. You're amazing. You are awesome. I will see you next Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Be here for the next block, The Hunting Dog from Duck Hunt. I love you guys. Thank you. Oh wait, what am I doing? I can just do this. I can, I can, I can just do this and go, thank you, I love you.